Chapter 3361 Chaotic Flow of Space Long Chen Seeing Long Chen be devoured by the collapsed spatial channel, Bai Shishi's heart felt empty. The weariness of severely overdrafting her power suddenly hit her, and she swayed. Seeing this, Bai Xiaol hastily supported his big sister. What can we do? asked Bai Xiaol, looking at Qin Feng. Boss should be all right. We have to return first. With the sect maintaining divine stone, we don't have to be afraid of anyone. Long Chen had entrusted the divine stone to Qin Feng and told him how to use it. Even a heaven tier immortal king could be slain with it, which was why Long Chen dared to bring them here despite knowing that it was a trap. The world had returned to normal. The channel was gone, as was the barrier. Having no idea where Long Chen had gone, they could only return to the academy and report things to the main academy. However, with Qin Feng and Kai Yu's understanding of Long Chen, they didn't believe that the spatial channel's destruction would kill Long Chen. The most likely possibility was that he was brought somewhere else, between this place and where Imputa had tried to bring him. Within the darkness, endless fragments were flying. Long Chen was sucked into the chaotic flow of space. Luckily, this wasn't Long Chen's first time falling into the chaotic flow of space. Now, he had the demon moon furnace above him, and he used his bone saber to knock away spatial blades. He could only rely on his sense of danger for this, as these spatial blades were invisible. They were like rocks within a turbulent current, possessing immense power. After blocking dozens of those spatial blades, there was a rice-sized nick in the saber. This bone saber was incomparably tough and shockingly sharp. It was able to clash directly with king items. But it was still damaged by these spatial blades. As for the demon moon furnace, it was helping Long Chen block the majority of the attacks. However, Long Chen could clearly sense Ling Er's energy being rapidly depleted. If this continued, it wouldn't be long before he was crushed by this chaotic flow. He couldn't see the slightest light nor a glimmer of hope within this endless darkness. It was like he had fallen into an endless cycle of death. However, for some reason, even within this darkness, he didn't feel much panic. Instead, he felt a particularly peaceful feeling. It was like this darkness gave him a sense of safety. All of a sudden, Long Chen closed his right eye and slowly opened his left eye. He activated the purgatory eyes. The severely wounded eye that was still red and bloody was actually refreshed. Within this darkness, he felt a soothing cool feeling settle over his eye. After that, it began to automatically heal. It was very comfortable. Furthermore, the dark world gradually grew clear. He started to see many runes swirling around. These runes formed an endless sea, and he saw translucent crescent blades swirling around this sea. Those were the spatial blades. Long Chen suddenly saw a giant spatial blade coming toward him, and his hair stood on end. The previous spatial blades were only a few feet long, but this one was hundreds of meters long. It seemed that it was coming right for Long Chen, so he hastily dodged to the side. The spatial blade whirled right past Long Chen. It wasn't particularly fast, but it possessed unstoppable power. A powerful suction force almost dragged Long Chen in. That thing could probably kill world kings, no? Long Chen felt a chill. That kind of power was beyond his comprehension. Most terrifying of all, it came silently and without any warning. If it hadn't been for the purgatory eyes, perhaps he would only be able to sense it right when it was about to strike him. If the slightest bit of it were to touch him, then even if he had ten thousand lives, they would all be lost here. He then looked around. The purgatory eyes were able to see far and wide. He even saw spatial blades that were thousands of miles long slowly spinning. When he saw those, he almost jumped out of his skin. This was the chaotic flow of space, the place that separated the major worlds. 
It was no wonder that even world kings would be crushed if they were supped inside here. Now that he was here, he truly experienced just how terrifying the chaotic flow of space was. This was a world of death. It was only thanks to the purgatory eyes that he no longer needed to directly block the spatial blades. The main thing is, how do I get out? Long Chen was vexed. The chaotic flow of space could be considered its own world. It was endless. Was he going to be stuck here forever? Long Chen's purgatory eyes gradually recovered. As Long Chen was dragged along by the wild currents, he dodged the larger spatial blades. He was safe for now. However, he didn't know where this current was bringing him, nor did he know how to get out. All he could do was keep an eye on the surroundings. Boom. After an unknown amount of time, a giant vortex appeared not too far from him, and the chaotic flow of space exploded. From that collapsed space, he saw two huge monsters. They were spitting out divine light from their mouths, piercing the void. Feeling delighted, Long Chen charged in that direction. In a clash between experts, the barrier between worlds could be broken. That was the best chance to escape the chaotic flow of space. A huge hole had been blasted into space, so Long Chen was charging toward it. He saw what was on the other side. Just as he was getting close to the giant hole and preparing to flee before it closed, he suddenly paused. He saw countless mountain-sized figures devouring the starry sky. The stars were exploding one by one. Even within the chaotic flow of space, he could sense that incomparable power. What is this? Long Chen was horrified. These monsters were devouring an entire star field. Furthermore, there were specks of light appearing from the depths of the star field. Long Chen could then vaguely see some humanoid life forms appear. However, the hole he was looking through seemed to be at the heart of that pack of monsters. If he went out, he would be directly crushed by those terrifying shock waves. Hence, he could only watch as the hole slowly closed. His heart pounded. He had never seen anything so terrifying. Just what level had those monsters reached? Seeing an opportunity slip by because he didn't dare to grasp it vexed Long Chen. But there was no way around it. If he went out in that kind of situation, he would definitely die. At the same time as he was vexed, he gained an understanding of what was called terrifying power. He still knew too little about the nine heavens and ten lands. Originally, he had thought that he was already quite strong. But when he saw those stars being crushed, that newfound confidence shattered. The shattered void then healed, causing the chaotic flow of space to return to its normal appearance. In this place, time seemed to stretch on eternally. The calmness was rather frightening. Long Chen patiently waited. He couldn't sense the flow of time here. Eventually, at some point, his purgatory eyes were fully healed. Oh. Suddenly, space shuddered and exploded, startling Long Chen. Before he could even get a look, a powerful suction force dragged him out of the chaotic flow of space. Chapter 3362 Fish in Troubled Water Boom The void exploded, and Long Chen was dragged out of the chaotic flow of space by some power from the outer world. Long Chen then felt a terrifying pressure that almost crushed him. Before he could even get a clear look at what was going on, he shot out like a meteor. After that, he blasted through fragments of space-time and crashed into the ground. A giant hole was smashed into the ground. Long Chen saw stars revolving in his head and was almost crushed by the impact. Kill! Curious roars shook the land and countless experts were roaring. Only now did Long Chen realize that he was on an immense battlefield. He saw countless lifeforms with black and red armor fighting. Corpses littered the ground. Smelling the air, Long Chen was startled. This is the aura of the netherworld. And these life forms look similar to the human race, but they don't have any immortal Kai. Instead, it's nether Kai. 
Long Chen climbed up a mountain. Looking far and wide, he saw a giant black city in the distance. The black city had a barrier of divine light around it and a towering castle inside. Moreover, a multicolored ball of light at the top of the castle was like a strange eye overlooking this world. The eye glowed. It seemed to be the core of the castle, but it was different from the cores of the immortal world's formation. This core was actually exposed. The black city had countless life forms wearing black armor pouring out of it. It seemed that they were defending, and the life forms in red armor were attacking. In the distance, spatial cracks were appearing. Sharp blades cut through the void, as if wanting to cut apart heaven and earth. That was a battle of peak experts. Seeing those huge cracks, Long Chen understood that it was their fight that had shattered space and allowed him to escape. However, that distant battlefield was still twisting violently, with runes constantly exploding. He was unable to see who was fighting. All of a sudden, Long Chen felt a gust of wind. A life form in red armor had noticed him and was attacking. That was a divine lord, but he was instantly killed by a slap. After a soul search, Long Chen learned that these red armor life forms were attacking the city. But this little grunt had no idea who the leader was or who the real target was. An idea then popped into Long Chen's head. He took off that person's armor and put it on. Their figures weren't that different, so it was enough for him to muddle in amongst them. Long Chen then grabbed his spear, which felt cold in his hand. The materials were very different from the weapons of the immortal world. Kill. Kill them all. There's no need to fear. Wearing the red armor, Long Chen instantly began to shout. Having come to the netherworld before, he also knew the language here. However, once he shouted, he saw that no one listened to his orders. Instead, he drew a late-stage Divine Lord's anger. What are you shouting for? Get going. The city gates will fall soon. If you dare to be lazy, I'll kill you. The armor that they were wearing had ranks, and everyone could tell a person's status just from their armor. Long Chen had simply been unaware. Long Chen directly smashed that person with his spear. Fuck, you dare to howl at your boss Long Sam. Have you not died before? The other life forms around jumped in shock. A subordinate had actually attacked a superior. That was a major criminal charge. What are you looking at? I'm one of your disguised generals. I was put here to keep an eye on all of you. Anyone who slacks off will be personally killed by me. Do you know who stands behind me? shouted Long Chen. Those divine lords were shocked by Long Chen. His realm was clearly lower than theirs, but he could crush a late-stage divine lord. What are you looking at? Charge. Long Chen waved his spear. Those people that were originally following the person that Long Chen had crushed just now could only follow him. Long Chen led hundreds of them in an assault, and they got closer to the city walls. Long Chen wanted to see what was going on. It seemed that the city defenses had been raised to their peak, and the attackers were piling up their lives to drown the city. That meant the city was in imminent danger. Seeing that the city was about to be broken into, Long Chen's old disease popped up again. He wanted to see if he could dredge up any benefits. After coming empty-handed, he couldn't leave with nothing. That wasn't his style. Are you blind? Don't randomly run around. The left flank is the weakest. Attack the left flank. Long Chen led his group straight toward the city gates, only for an immortal king to bark orders at them. What do you know? The weak left flank is to bait us. The frontal gate is our real goal. Long Chen ignored him. Who cared if it was weak? Entering through the gates was the fastest path. Otherwise, when the city was broken into, he would be stuck on the edges. Wouldn't the good stuff be taken by others before he could get there? You're not listening to orders. Die. The immortal king furiously reached toward Long Chen. Seeing this, 
Long Chen snorted and unleashed a punch. As a result, that mortal tear, immortal king screamed. His arm was destroyed. Grabbing his neck, Long Chen lifted him up like a chicken. He shouted, Master Tuo Ming has ordered me to oversee the battle. I am in charge of secretly controlling the tempo of the attack. You fools have wasted so many warriors for nothing without taking the city. You're all trash. Master Tuo Ming is already very dissatisfied. I am ordered to take down the city gates within an instant's sticks worth of time. Otherwise, all of you will die. If you don't want to die, then you better listen to my orders. If you want to die, just nod and I'll send you on your way. On the way here, he had heard quite a few people shouting the name of Chuo Ming, which was why he used this name to intimidate them. That immortal king's head was buzzing from Long Chen's words. He was terrified as he was incredibly weak in front of Long Chen. He felt like Long Chen might even have the power of an earth-tier immortal king. Senior, please spare my life. We'll listen to you. That person shuddered, finally believing that Long Chen was Chuo Ming's trusted subordinate. Otherwise, with Long Chen's power, there was no way he would be wearing the armor of a normal grunt. Summon our people. Smash into the gate, shouted Long Chen. He then released him, and that person immediately started gathering people. Boom! Just then, an explosion shook the heavens. Two figures came out of that battlefield of twisting space. When Long Chen saw one of them, he almost cried out. No way! Chapter 3363 Switching Sides Just before battle, two people were fighting in that battle between supreme experts. One was a large man in red armor. He wore a sinisterly blood-colored helmet. The other was a peerlessly beautiful woman in a black dress. She was so beautiful that she didn't have a single flaw. Even every hair of her eyebrows was perfectly symmetrical. Wielding her bone sword, she was noble yet cold, beautiful yet dangerous. Her eyes were like sapphires, containing a deep light that could draw people's souls inside. Lang Yuan. Long Chen was shocked to see the figure that had appeared in his dreams countless times. Lang Yuan was definitely the most special of Long Chen's women. He loved her but was also a bit afraid of her. It was like her love had poison in it, poison that could not be extracted. Lang Yuan, your city is going to fall soon. Even if I have to use my soldiers' lives to slowly climb on top, I will still crush you. Once your city is broken, let's see how you will protect Ming Kanyu. The two of you are one. Now that she is making her breakthrough to Nether King, your power is unstable. You are definitely dead today, said the armored man while laughing. His red armor was covered in teeth and scales. His helmet covered his face, and his voice was rough and unpleasant to listen to. If you want my life, it'll be up to your ability, snorted Lang Yuan. She was still as icily aloof as before. Even in front of death, she didn't feel the slightest fear. Long Chan was shocked. At this moment, he sensed that Lang Yuan was already an immortal king. However, in the netherworld, they weren't called immortal kings, but nether kings. At the same time, he realized that this Tuoming was quite sinister. He actually chose to launch his attack while Ming Kang Yu was trying to break through. Furthermore, it seemed that he was aware that Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu were once one. So when Ming Kang Yu made her breakthrough, she had to borrow Lang Yuan's power. As for Lang Yuan, her aura seemed like she had just broken through to the immortal king realm. Her realm was unstable. Furthermore, a majority of her power was being used by Ming Kangyu. Tuo Ming truly chose the right time to attack. The battle had already progressed to this point. Clearly, Ming Kangyu could not stop now. She either succeeded or failed. If she failed, she would die along with Leng Yuan. Thus, the current Leng Yuan only had one option, and that was to risk her life. 
Leng Yuan was as beautiful as ever, but her crystalline mouth now had a trace of redness. That was her blood. Her stubbornness was a grieving. Let's see just how long you can last. Once the formation is broken, you're definitely dead. Tio Ming snorted and smashed his meteor hammer toward her. To face it, Leng Yuan's bone sword swung out. The two began to fight again, and space twisted once more. Their immense power tore apart space, making it impossible for the others to see their figures. It was only possible to see the sky constantly collapsing, as if the end of the world had come. That Tuo Ming should be a heaven-tier immortal king, but Leng Yuan has just broken through. She's naturally at a disadvantage. Her aura is already starting to drop while Tuo Ming is still at full power. She can't last much longer. Long Chen was worried. Their battle wasn't something that he could interfere with at his current cultivation base. He would only cause trouble for her. The most worrying thing was that Tuo Ming had far too many people. They outnumbered Lang Yuan's side by over ten times. The formation would probably be broken even before Lang Yuan was defeated, Leng Yuan was so suppressed. The reason that she was still able to fight back was definitely connected to this city. If the city was broken into, everything would be over. What are you standing around like this for? Hurry up and attack. Just then, a furious roar rang out. An earth-tier immortal king shouted at Long Chen and his troop. The immortal king that Long Chen had intimidated was actually this immortal king's subordinate. Long Chen now had a group of experts just blindly following his orders. However, Long Chen was stunned by Leng Yuan and stopped moving. As they didn't dare to make any rash movements, they also stopped. This. This senior ordered us to listen to his directions, said the immortal king who had been struck by Long Chen. He immediately cleared himself of wrongdoing and blamed Long Chen. That earth tier immortal king was enraged. Seeing that Long Chen was only a four peak brat, he felt that his subordinate had gone stupid. He called this brat senior. The earth tier immortal king shouted, Brat, you just as he shouted again, Long Chen slapped him in the face. This earth-tier immortal king was a general, and so he didn't enter the battle personally. As a result, since he wasn't in his combat-ready state, he was sent flying, hacking up blood and teeth. This one slap stunned everyone on the battlefield, especially Tuo Ming's people. They stared in shock at Long Chen, and the pace of the battle slowed down. Those experts in red armor were dumbfounded. Before they could recover from their shock, Long Chen pointed at the Earth-tier mortal king and cursed, Useless thing, you haven't managed to break into the city after all this time. Do we need trash like you? Just kill yourself. Stop embarrassing yourself here. If Master relied on trash like you to achieve anything, it would be too late for anything. All of you scram. I'm going to show you what true power is, you trash. I'll show you what the expression blasting through rutting wood is. Long Chen flew into the air. After that, a flame lotus appeared in his hand, and a sacred chanting filled the air. As the scripture rang out, the wind and clouds changed color. The world was dyed red. Countless flame runes filled this place and surged, toward Long Chen's flame lotus. As for the earth-tier immortal king, just as he was preparing to kill Long Chen, he was stunned by this scene. When did Master raise such a terrifying expert? That earth-tier immortal king felt chills when he sensed that terrifying pressure. Other than Tuo Ming himself, he had never seen anyone capable of unleashing such power. The flames rose. The flame lotus filled the world with its light, growing bigger and bigger. The bigger it grew, the greater its power. Tuo Ming's subordinates hastily retreated when they saw this. Even the earth-tier immortal king was terrified by the huge flame lotus. The power contained within this one move was astonishing. When the flame lotus reached a certain size, 
black threads appeared. Those weren't actually threads, but fine spatial cracks. Even space was unable to endure this power. Good. The Nirvana scripture still works in the netherworld. Long Chen smiled sinisterly. He suddenly turned toward the red armored army that was staring in shock and anticipation. Chapter 3364 World Extermination Flame Lotus Two of Ming's subordinates were quite obedient. Following Long Chen's orders, they stopped attacking the barrier. They knew that once Long Chen's attack fell, the barrier would definitely crumble. An army of millions retreated and was now gathered together, afraid of being affected by Long Chen's attack. They were just waiting for the barrier to be broken, and they would charge forward. As for the experts in black armor, seeing the giant lotus that filled the heavens, they despaired. There was no way that the formation could block it. Leng Yuan was fighting a bloody battle with Tuo Ming, so she had no time to consider other things. She was doing her absolute best to stall for time. Ming Kang Yu was only a bit off from breaking through. She was gambling with Tuo Ming right now. Either she and Ming Kang Yu died together, or Ming Kang Yu would break through before the city was broken into, and they could instantly reverse the tides. In a battle like this, all her attention had to be on her opponent. However, when she heard the Nirvana scripture, she faltered, practically not daring to believe her ears. The distraction almost caused her to be seriously injured. As for Tuo Ming, he was startled and stopped pressing the attack. He then looked at Long Chen. Seeing that giant flame lotus as well as his sinister smile, his expression changed. He could see that Long Chen's target was not the barrier but his subordinates. His figure swayed, but just as he moved, Leng Yuan's bone sword hacked down. She unleashed consecutive blows, forcing him back in a hurry. Originally, the two were somewhat evenly matched, but since Leng Yuan knew that Long Chen had come to help, she definitely wouldn't let Tuo Ming pass. She immediately started launching risky attacks. Kill him! He's a traitor! shouted Tuo Ming after failing to break free of her blockade several times. You're the spy. All of you are spies. Long Chen suddenly sent the flame lotus smashing toward the dumbfounded red armored army. Tuo Ming's warning came too late. By the time those people reacted, the world extermination flame lotus had fallen right into their midst. It exploded right in the middle of them. Boop. The lotus had nine petals and eighty-one star-like flame spheres on the petals. They all exploded at the same time, and a wave of fire enveloped the red army. A giant mushroom cloud exploded. There was no flying sand or rubble. The terrifying heat simply incinerated everything. A sea of lava appeared on the ground, and millions of experts were turned to ash after this attack. However, two wretched figures suddenly crawled out of the sea of lava. Both of them were badly charred and were no longer even human-shaped. They were alive, but with only half their lives. Who dare to come out? Do you think your boss Long San is a vegetarian? These two were earth-tier immortal kings. Relying on their immense power, they managed to just barely keep their lives. But as soon as they appeared, Long Chen shot toward them, slashing them with his saber one blow each, cutting them like radishes. The entire army was now annihilated. Even mighty earth-tier immortal kings were reduced to powerless existences and killed just like that. The experts inside the city were stunned. Who are you? Tuo Ming roared furiously. He was blocked by Leng Yuan and unable to get back. So, he could only watch as the army that he had bitterly raised was destroyed. He was infuriated. I am who I am, Boss Long San. I also have another status. I am the husband of that peerlessly beautiful woman opposing you. Long Chen looked down arrogantly at Tuo Ming. Just then... A majestic aura soared out of the city. Tuo Ming furiously roared, 
you dare to ruin this just wait i won't let any of you off chiu ming then stamped on the air and shot away like a bolt of lightning after that lang yuan appeared in front of long chen her beautiful face was frosty however there was a burning light in her eyes that was so hot it seemed as if it could melt someone long chen smiled long time no see a sharp pain pierced long chen's shoulder lang yuan had actually stabbed him long chen was shocked and enraged but before he could do anything lang yuan grabbed his neck with her other hand and kissed him tightly although it was incredibly painful when the bone sword stabbed into his body it very quickly felt as if long chen was immersed in sunlight the bone blade had a magical energy that made him grow more accustomed to this world he was no longer expelled by it long chen realized that leng yuan was using her divine energy to get him accustomed to the laws of the netherworld he relaxed just as he prepared to enjoy leng yuan's kiss she pulled away i should stab you a few more times you actually resisted lang yuan looked at long chen with what seemed to be delight and anger long chen felt a chill and a bad feeling rose in his heart the fiery passion from seeing lang yuan dimmed this woman was truly fickle it was nothing more than a bodily reaction instinct i long chen helplessly explained only for lang yuan to tightly hug him fool it's because I hate you that I make things hard on you, muttered Lang Yuan as she leaned her head against his chest. Ate me? Lai. Long Chen tightly held Lang Yuan. Smelling her specific fragrance, he didn't know how he had offended her. Because of you, we've been worried sick every single day. Tell me, don't you think that I should hate you? said Lang Yuan. Long Chen's heart warmed. In the final battle of the Martial Heaven Continent, Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu had come to help them from across worlds. However, at that time, Long Chen was in the middle of making a breakthrough. By the time he woke up, Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu had exhausted all their energy due to being rejected by the laws of the Martial Heaven Continent and had been forced to return to the Netherworld. The two of them were not aware of what happened afterward. Furthermore, at that time, the Martial Heaven Continent already seemed doomed. They had no idea whether or not Long Chen had survived, so they had been constantly worried about him. Long Chen tightly held her, softly saying, You should hate me. I made you worry. If the positions were switched, and he knew Ling Yuan and Ming Kang Yu were in trouble while he was suddenly sent into a different world from them, he would definitely be driven mad. He could understand that hate, let alone being stabbed once, even being turned into a pincushion would be acceptable if he could relieve her pain. You know how to talk at least. At that time, I swore that I would stab you for every day you made me wait. But since you understand, I'll settle for just once. However, as for whether Kang Yu will settle for that, it'll be up to your own fortune. Lang Yuan looked at Long Chen and smiled. It was like a flower blooming. But Long Chen's heart sank. He had no idea how Ming Kang Yu would greet him. Just as Long Chen was worried about the possibilities, Lang Yuan held his hand and slowly walked into the ancient city with him. Chapter 3365 Lang Yuan's Emotions The barrier opened and Lang Yuan brought Long Chen into the city. The black armored experts knelt toward her, filled with reverence. Lang Yuan was a supreme existence in their eyes. Even inside the city, there were piles of corpses. Some of the buildings had been destroyed and the formation was on the verge of breaking, but fortunately, Long Chen had turned things around. After kneeling at Lang Yuan, these experts got to work. They cleaned up the battlefield repairing the formation and recuperating from their wounds. As for Lang Yuan herself, she seemed to be indifferent to all of this. She didn't say a single word and just brought Long Chen to the tallest building in the ancient city, the castle. Did you miss me? Lang Yuan suddenly spoke. I missed you. I missed you a lot. 
I saw you in my dreams countless times, but every time I woke up from those dreams, I felt miserable. Long Chen nodded. This was true. He had seen her in more than one dream, and always felt the same kind of disappointment when he woke up. It wasn't just her. He also saw Meng Kai, Chu Yao, Tang Wan Er, Yi Jik Yu, and the others in his dreams. He saw them, and the dragon blood warriors drinking and laughing together. However, sometimes it was good dreams, and sometimes it was nightmares that woke him up in a startled terror. He didn't know what exactly he felt inside. Seeing that faint bitterness in his eyes, Lang Yuan squeezed his hand. A rare warmth appeared on her face. Everything will get better. We're working hard on cultivation so that we can help you one day. This faint warmth on her face made Long Chen's heart swell. It was like someone gave him a warm blanket in winter. That warmth clothed him in confidence and courage so that he could face countless dangers and enemies. The two of them entered the castle. Many of the ruins of the castle were already dim. It was most likely the core of the city, and today's battle had exhausted a great deal of its energy. At the very peak, the formation activated, and they were brought to Ming Kangyu. She appeared identical to Leng Yuan. She was seated lotus-style on the ground, divine light flowing around her, making her appear sacred and holy. Didn't she already advance to a mortal king? Why is her aura so unstable? Asked Long Chen worriedly. Had a problem occurred with the breakthrough? We were in a crisis just now, so she had no choice but to quickly make her breakthrough. After advancing and scaring off to Omain, now that we are safe, she has to restabilize her cultivation base. The reckless advancement caused some side effects that must be corrected, or her foundation will be shaken, said Leng Yuan. Long Chen nodded. Perhaps in order to advance faster, Ming Kang Yu had used some sort of secret art. Such a thing would definitely leave flaws that would affect future advancements. Since she had just advanced, she still had time to fix those flaws. She could stabilize her realm and reduce the damage to the lowest possible amount. If she was instead forced to fight after such a breakthrough, then she wouldn't have this chance. It would be difficult to ever recover from such a thing, and her future cultivation would be severely impacted. Lang Yuan examined Meng Kang Yu. She looked closely at the runes around her, and then brought Long Chen away. They arrived at the sun room of the castle. From here, they could overlook the entire city. Countless experts were working to repair the city. Looking at those busy figures, Long Chen said, Well, can you be all right? She'll be fine. It's a good thing that you came when you did. Her realm has not fully stabilized, so there is a chance to correct it. Speaking of which, how did you even end up coming here? Asked Leng Yuan. The answer was a long story. Sitting down and holding her hand, Long Chen narrated what had happened, starting with the Battle of the Martial Heaven Continent. He spent hours telling her everything. Leng Yuan smiled. Her beautiful face was like a flower blooming. She was very happy with Long Chen's star-telling. She could hear the confidence he had in her, and that he needed her. Long Chen never told others about the bitterness in his heart. But in front of Leng Yuan, he could set down his burdens and speak freely. It was like Leng Yuan was a fierce and powerful big sister. Although a bit violent, she still gave him an indescribable sense of security. There was no need for him to fake anything. There was no need for him to force himself up. He could freely tell her what he had gone through, and that was precisely why she smiled. This storytelling was a kind of acknowledgement. Perhaps amongst all of Long Chen's beauties, only she was able to handle this. The reason why he didn't need to hold anything back was because she was strong enough. Leng Yuan liked that kind of acknowledgement. Don't just listen to me talk. What about you two? How did you end up in a life and death battle against Chuo Ming? Asked Long Chen. There's nothing to tell. 
we were unable to help you on the martial heaven continent due to being on different planes if we were to forcibly create a spatial channel connecting the two the laws of the netherworld would instantly destroy the martial heaven continent we could only hope that you wouldn't die somehow breaking free of the bindings of that plane and ascending to the immortal world in any case we sped up our cultivation and began expanding our territory through ling yuan's explanation long chen learned that the laws of cultivation in the netherworld were different from the immortal world the netherworld also had countless races but there was a specific nether god race that could be considered the emperor race of the netherworld they were born with the laws of the netherworld flowing within their bodies that was what allowed them to be in charge of the six daos of reincarnation Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu belonged to this innate emperor race, which was why when they were born, they were already in Nether God. Their parents were the laws of this Nether World. The Nether World's so-called six Daos of reincarnation were the laws that maintained the nine heavens and ten lands. For example, when Long Chen was attacking the Nether Passage realm and entered the gates of Hell Trial in the Nether World. That was one of the laws of the six Daos of reincarnation. The one in charge of keeping watch and protecting these laws was Ming Kang Yu. This passage was something related to the secrets of the nine heavens and ten lands. There were countless experts maintaining these laws. Ming Kang Yu was in charge of merely one minuscule portion, and it just so happened that the martial heaven continent was included in that portion. That was why her clone was sent into the martial heaven continent, to sever any goodness left in her. As a result, she ended up producing Leng Yuan. Eventually, due to Long Chen, the two of them became two separate existences, but also one whole. As nether gods, the more laws of the netherworld that they could control, the faster their cultivation, and the greater the karmic luck supporting them. In order to get stronger, they began to expand their territory. They gradually grew stronger, but in the process, they also faced endless dangers. Just like the immortal world, the netherworld was a world where the weak were devoured by the strong. Naturally, their sudden rise would draw the attention of other experts, and they would bear their bloodthirsty fangs at them. Chapter 3366 Preparing for Battle in the Netherworld There were two methods to expand one's territory. One was expanding into wild areas that were abandoned by others. The laws in those areas were muddled, and taking over such an area and cleaning up those laws took a great deal of time. Moreover, restoring the laws required one's core energy. The other method was far more simple and more violent. That was to directly take the territory of another. By killing the master of a region, it would naturally become your region once you placed your mark on it. As long as you had power, this was the fastest method. Ming Kang Yu also wanted to use this method to strengthen herself, but she found that she was unable to make herself attack the ones surrounding her. Back then, she felt that it was the interference of the good in her heart. Thus, she expelled that goodness, sending it to the martial heaven continent so it would be dyed black by the evil of humanity. After that, she would take it back. At that time, her heart would be clear, and she could do anything she wanted without having any misgivings or inner conflict. But she failed. Her goodness had transformed into Lane Yuan. The two of them influenced each other but remained separate. Ming Kang Yu's original plan was to use any means necessary to get stronger, but Leng Yuan refused. Her principle was that if someone didn't offend her, she wouldn't offend them. If someone did offend her, she would rip them out by the roots. Navaloon calm, however, she refused to take the initiative in bullying someone. That was her pride that she refused to change. Feeling helpless, Ming Kang Yu agreed to search for wild areas with Lang Yuan, and the two of them were surprisingly lucky. They actually found a world that automatically repaired its laws as soon as they took control over it, delighting them. As a result of taking over this world, 
their cultivation bases rapidly soared. Their subordinates also grew stronger after they took over this territory. However, this also drew the attention of others. Tuo Ming was one of them, and he was very crafty. He seemed to have a method to watch over things here, and actually launched an attack just as Ming Kangyu was attacking the Immortal King realm. If Long Chen hadn't come in time, he would have succeeded. Since Tuo Ming was not fighting in his territory, even as a heaven-tier Immortal King, he was blocked by Ling Yuan, who had just advanced to the Immortal King realm. Tuo Ming failed this time. Will he spread this news far and wide to draw over other attackers? Asked Long Chen. Most likely no. If this news is leaked, we would be destroyed by others, and he wouldn't gain anything. He has paid so much. He came out with almost all his subordinates and lost them. If he can't gain anything, he won't do such a thing, said Lang Yuan. Long Chen nodded. That was reasonable, but he then frowned. On his own, he definitely won't dare to return. If he goes against the two of you, he might lose his life. But he is definitely unwilling to give up like this. If everyone was to learn of what was happening here, they would definitely come to attack you. Then he won't gain anything. If I were him, I would definitely think of some way to quickly gather two or three helpers to devour this place, and then split the profits. Furthermore, they will come quickly. Too late, and this piece of meat will be devoured by others. In other words, we have to hurry and prepare, said Long Chen gravely. There's nothing for us to prepare. In at most three days, Tuo Ming will return. Even if he only brings another heaven to your nether king, Leng Yuan and I won't be able to endure. Their subordinates only have to break the nether god tower, and this world will once more become a masterless area. If we don't control this territory, we won't be supported by a continuous stream of its energy, and we won't be able to fight them. I'm simply waiting for Kang Yu to stabilize her realm before leaving. We'll go back to our old home and think of something else, said Leng Yuan. She bit her lip, a bit unwilling to leave. However, there was no way around it. This was the wisest choice. If they did this, at least they would keep their lives and their foundation. However, they would end up back at the starting point. All their efforts during this time would be wasted. Furthermore, having lost this territory without the support of the laws that had allowed them to reach their current realm, there was no way that they could maintain their current realms. In at most a year, their realms would fall back down. But there was no way around it. Don't be in a rush. There will definitely be a way. Long Chen comforted Leng Yuan as his head rapidly worked. After working so hard for a territory just for it to be taken away, let alone Leng Yuan and Ming Kangyu, even Long Chen himself was unable to accept it. He could only accept him taking from others and not others taking from him, and especially not taking from his women's things. Yuan, take a look at this. Long Chen took out some sharp arrows with rusty arrowheads. When Ling Yuan touched them, her expression changed. The aura of the ghost Dao. How did you obtain this thing? I took the rust off of a ghost ship and used it to make some arrowheads, said Long Chen. Long Chen hadn't mentioned the ghost ship before because Bai Shishi was part of it. He wasn't such a fool to talk about other women in front of Lang Yuan. He wasn't that tired of living yet. A ghost ship? Tell me, what did you see? Lang Yuan's expression became grave. Long Chen obediently explained what he had seen. But he didn't mention Bai Shishi. Corpse spirits from ancient times. It's no wonder that the number of life forms in the netherworld has dropped slightly year after year. So it was done by the ghost Dao. Leng Yuan muttered to herself, but she suddenly shut her mouth. Ignore the rest. Is this thing useful? Asked Long Chen. It is. This rust contains the power of time. 
Furthermore, it is the kind of time power that doesn't exist in the netherworld. Even an earth-tier nether cane would fall after being shot by one arrow. However, what is more shocking is this shaft. The wood contains a terrifying amount of wood life energy. This kind of wood possesses an immense killing power to the netherworld's life forms because the netherworld's aura contains death kai that is countered by this life energy. If shot by this kind of tough yet flexible wooden arrow, their nether kai would be thrown into chaos and they would temporarily lose their combat power, said Lang Yuan. So even just these arrow shafts are useful. Long Chen was pleasantly surprised. Do you have a lot of them? Lang Yuan's eyes brightened. I have as many as you want. Long Chen took out a piece of wood that was three meters thick and many miles long. Lang Yuan received it emotionally. The life energy contained within this piece of wood was astonishing. It gave her hope. Lang Yuan quickly gave orders. Two earth tier immortal kings carefully brought away the wood. Turn this divine wood into arrows as quickly as possible. Remember, don't even waste an inch. There's no need to worry about waste. We only seek a fast production rate. I have as much of this divine wood as you need. Make them as fast as possible. Long Chen waved his hand, taking out dozens of wooden pillars. Even Leng Yuan, with all her calm indifference, covered her mouth in shock. Chapter 3367 Changbung How Atop a Soft Bed Long Chen caressed Leng Yuan's silky skin. Looking at her beautiful face, which was just like a jade statue, Long Chen felt like he was the most blessed man alive. She was beautiful, arrogant, and could not be blasphemed. But she was still in his embrace. After showing their love for each other, he slept better than he ever had. Even after waking up, he stayed still, afraid of startling awake this sleeping beauty, as if he might wake up from a dream. However, when he looked at his body, which was covered in sharp teeth marks that still vaguely hurt, he knew that he wasn't dreaming. It's only been a few hours. Are you not going to sleep longer? Leng Yuan smiled beautifully, but she didn't open her eyes. She continued to rest her head on Long Chen's arm. I feel like sleeping is a waste of time. I'd rather spend my time looking at you. Long Chen smiled. If you keep looking at me, aren't you afraid that you'll get tired of it eventually? Ling Yuan opened her eyes. Her sapphire eyes were like stars in the night sky, pure yet also bewitching, beautiful yet dangerous. How could that happen? I'll never get tired of you, said Long Chen. Why don't you have the auras of others on you? Have you not done this with them after all this time? Asked Ling Yuan curiously. Isn't it because there's never been a chance? Said Long Chen somewhat helplessly. When it came to doing intimate acts, he had only done it with Ling Yuan and Ming Kanyu. However, those two times on the Martial Heaven Continent could barely be counted, because those were forced. As for during his nether passage breakthrough, he had only entered the netherworld in Yuan spirit form. It could be said that, in terms of truly doing this intimate act, this was the first. This time, it was carried out mutually. It was a merger of spirits and bodies. These sisters of mine really are adorably foolish. I couldn't do the same as them. My man is mine. Lang Yuan stood and her beautiful curves appeared before Long Chen in their entirety, pausing his heart to pound wildly. Lang Yuan's attraction was truly fatal, especially in such a situation. Seeing him like that, she smiled slightly. She then raised her arms, and black runes condensed around her, forming a black dress. Her bone sword also appeared on her back. In this dress, she seemed to have returned to her cold indifference. Only then did Long Chen realize that these clothes were connected to the laws of this world. When she put on these clothes, she became the master of this world. Laws were emotionless. That was why she seemed so indifferent. It was like she had become a part of the heavenly Tao's. 
in this state she truly was a god an existence that could not be blasphemed looking at ling yuan long chen suddenly smiled that smile was rather wretched ling yuan seemed to have seen through his thoughts and said that thinking of yours is very dangerous but it's not outside the realm of possibility it's just that you must have the power to conquer me or you will forever be conquered i feel like i can work hard at it long chen smiled ling yuan was like an untamable horse but the more that she couldn't be tamed the more he felt an intense desire to long chen put on his clothes holding each other's hands they came to the top of the castle they then saw millions of experts working hard at fletching arrows as lang yuan waved her hand an arrow appeared in front of long chen when he received it he exclaimed what skill your people were actually able to add so many rooms although long chen wasn't too familiar with this process he saw seven different runes on this arrow after being with Gyu ran and xia chen for so long although he didn't understand these runes he could differentiate that these people had added explosiveness destructiveness silentness and other powers to the arrow the normal wood foundation divine trees arrows were already naturally silent hence by adding these attributes their power greatly increased Leng Yuan's subordinates actually possessed such refined forging arts among my followers are some who come from a race specialized in archery they only recently joined me due to a lack of resources they haven't been able to show off their skill but the wood foundation divine trees you provided made them cry from emotion they didn't have good bows or arrows so they had no chance to show their skills before but now they finally have a chance to equip themselves their entire race is full of divine archers but due to offending other powers they ended up with nowhere to go and fled in every direction in the end i decided that i didn't dislike them so i permitted them to join me becoming my followers but even then they had no chance to grow others have been looking down on them and they've had to suffer quite a bit during this time now it seems that they can finally vent look that fellow is coming said ling yuan an elder of medium build but exceptionally robust walked over his arms were particularly thick and had natural marks on them long chen was startled could it be that those marks were from archery this was a natural archer chang on how greets the divine master and the divine master's consort the elder knelt toward the two of them divine master's consort long chen almost coughed up blood his expression immediately changed and ling yuan couldn't help laughing a you can call me boss long sen and never call me a consort again ordered long chen severely when had he become a consort if that status became set in stone how would he face the rest of the world if mo nian were to learn of it would long chen not be laughed at for a lifetime eh the elder looked at lang yuan lang yuan held back her laughter and waved her hand just listen to him chen bong hao greets boss long san the elder once more kowtowed toward long chen long chen lifted him up in the future you can just do that to the divine master don't do it to me i don't like it yes boss long sen whatever you say i will do i was so bold as to come here because i wanted to thank you our longbow race lives for archery but by my generation we have declined to the absolute bottom and are bullied by other races if it wasn't for the protection of the divine master my longbow race would have been destroyed my longbow race will never be able to repay the divine master's kindness changong heyong grew more and more emotional as he spoke he managed to get out some words of gratitude as he shed tears at the same time in the end he took out a longbow and offered it up with both hands this is the wooden bow i made just now 
boss Long San, please give me pointers. 1. Changong equals Longbo. How equals vast? Chapter 3368 The valiant Longbo race Long Chen received the bow. In his hand the wood seemed to come to life, and the marks on top of the wood flowed on top of it like water. Long Chen had no idea what kind of technique Chen Gong Hao had used to unleash the maximum potential of the wood foundation divine tree. As for the bowstring, it was actually made with the fibers of the wood foundation divine tree's bark. Its strength exceeded Long Chen's expectations. Long Chen hadn't expected the wood foundation divine trees to have so many uses. Every part of this tree was turned into priceless treasures in the hands of the longbow race. Moreover, the bow felt incredibly heavy in his hand. When Long Chen pulled the bowstring, the wooden marks on the bow instantly lit up. He was unable to fully draw the longbow. Good bow. Long Chen couldn't help praising this bow. He stored up power to try drawing it again. As a result, the bow buzzed and veins popped on Long Chen's arms. It actually required 90% of his max power just to draw the bow. Furthermore, his arms were quivering. There was no way he could shoot accurately in this state. What brute power! Chang Gong Hao was shocked by Long Chen's physical power. For him to be able to draw the bow relying purely on brute power was beyond expectations. This bow's power might not be able to reach the level of a king item, but it's not much worse. The longbow race's name is not only for show, praised Long Chen. A piece of wood had actually been turned into such a terrifying weapon at their hands. The world was truly large and filled with marvels. Boss Long San, try and shoot an arrow. Changong Yuo handed Long Chen an arrow. Knocking the arrow, he unleashed the full power of his divine flames. The bow instantly became like a crescent moon. The bowstring buzzed. With a light sound, the arrow vanished. Boom! Suddenly, a broken flagpole on a mound ten thousand miles away was pierced by the arrow. That flagpole had the thickness of an arm and was made of the finest metal of the netherworld. It was incredibly tough. There were many of them on that mound. They were left behind by their enemies, and Chang Gong Hao had actually decided to use that place as a shooting range. What a beautiful curved arrow! Chang Gong Hao praised Long Chen. None of Long Chen's power had been wasted in that shot. Even amongst members of the Longbow race, those who could shoot such a perfect curved arrow were considered peak experts. Just by looking at Long Chen's palms, he knew that Long Chen wasn't an archer specialist. Hence, he couldn't help feeling admiration and shock when he saw that Long Chen was capable of shooting so accurately. He had originally just come to thank Long Chen for his divine wood, allowing them to show their power and use. Of course, he also wanted to show everyone that it was not a mistake for Lane Yuan to take in their longbow race. The reason he had asked Long Chen to try the bow first was to show them all the quality of his craftsmanship, and also his own terrifying archery arts afterward. But he hadn't expected Long Chen to also be an expert archer. Shooting that target directly was difficult, but Long Chen had clearly shot in a different direction, only for the arrow to arc toward the flagpole afterward. Furthermore, not one bit of the arrow's power leaked as it flew through the air. For the arrow to pierce the flagpole without knocking it down showed the power of the bow, arrow, and archer. Even Lang Yuan was moved. Your bow-making technique is truly admirable. The Wood Foundation Divine Trees went from trash to treasure in your hands, said Long Chen. The only regretful thing was that the runes of this longbow were from Netherworld. They were made in accordance with the Netherworld's laws, so they weren't suitable for the immortal world. Otherwise, Long Chen could have the longbow race make a few ten thousand of these amazing bows and raise an army of archers. Regretfully, there was no way for that dream to come true. But this also gave Long Chen a sense of alarm. Even the Netherworld had experts like this, 
so the immortal world definitely had countless amazing existences as well. He would have to be more careful in the future. Boss Long San, you're too courteous. I haven't turned trash into treasure. It was simply a treasure from the start, and I merely revised it a bit. This longbow was made by extracting the core of the divine wood. It came from the strongest part. So, every piece of wood you gave us was enough to make nine such bows. Right now, we have 136 of them. If the longbow race uses these divine bows, we can essentially ignore the protective Kai of an earth tier nether king. Unless it is someone like Tuo Ming wearing king item armor, a single arrow can disperse a person's nether Kai for at least a breath's time. That's enough for us to shoot the target full of holes, said Chang Gong Hao confidently. Chang Gong Hao took out a bow identical to the one that Long Chen held. The bow instantly bent like a crescent moon, and the marks on his arms lit up. He seemed to become one with the bow. Boot. A mountain at the very edge of their vision crumbled, and seven mountain peaks in front of it were pierced. His power was also perfectly concentrated. His arrow had pierced a tiny smooth hole in the seven mountain peaks before exploding on the eighth mountain. This one attack displayed his shocking control. The bow and arrow were like a part of his body. Furthermore, Long Chen also noted that the arrow had pierced through the seven mountain peaks at different speeds. In other words, even after the arrow left the bow, it was still under his control. That was not just a question of technique, it was an innate bloodline ability. This was something others couldn't learn no matter what. Excellent. It's finally the turn of your Lombo race to be the main character. When the battle starts, I'm looking forward to your display. Once you establish your merit, I will naturally reward you. Lane Yuean was also moved. That one arrow was truly powerful. Chang Gong Hao was an earth tier nether king, but this attack could even threaten a heaven tier nether king. Divine Master, let me just say it again. If it weren't for you taking pity on us, my longbow race would have long since been destroyed. Your favor is something that we will never forget. I didn't come for credit or to be dazzling. I simply want to show you that with these arrows, anyone who wants to touch a single hair on your head must walk over our corpses first. Chang Gong Hao knelt to Lang Yuan once more, his voice firm and confident. In order to make him even more confident, Long Chen tossed out over eighty wooden pillars. Those were just the branches of the wood foundation divine trees. As long as Long Chen tossed in more corpses, they would easily regrow. Seeing so many of these wood pillars, let alone Chang Gong Hao, even Lang Yuan was dumbfounded. Such a treasure was being tossed out by Long Chen like it was trash. Chang Gong Hao was so moved that he wanted to cry. He repeatedly thanked Long Chen. After repeated kowtows, he left with the wood. Watching as he left, Long Chen grinned. This guy was quite the character. Just as he was about to say something, a pair of hands warmly wrapped around him from behind. Chapter 3369 Ghost Sovereign Mark Even without looking back, Long Chen could sense an ore similar to Lang Yuan's. But it possessed a gentleness that Lang Yuan did not have. Long Chen then rubbed her hands. Can you? I missed you. Long Chen looked back and stared into Ming Kangyu's eyes. There was a gentle and soft emotion within that cold gaze. Lang Yuan's gaze also had warmth in it when she looked at him, but that warmth was sharp. That was the greatest difference between the two of them. Even without sensing their auras, just their eyes were enough for him to differentiate them. Ling Yuan had left at some point, as if giving them space. Ming Kang Yu then gently rubbed Long Chen's gaze. She smiled sweetly. Originally, I also hated you, but Yuan has punished you, so I won't punish you again. Ming Kang Yu tightly hugged Long Chen, pressing her face against his chest and listening to his powerful heartbeats. At this point, 
it seemed that any spoken words would be superfluous. Long Chen brushed Ming Kangyu's hair and kissed her forehead. Smelling her fragrance, he suddenly had a strange thought. He couldn't help asking, if you and Lang Yue are one, and she is your good side. I feel like this seems a bit mixed. Ming Kangyu giggled. You mean she seems more evil than me? Are you not afraid that she will continue to stab you? I am afraid, but she definitely won't kill me. If I don't ask, though, I might die from curiosity. Laughed Long Chen. You fool. How can you not know? Have you forgotten what you told me to do? Ming Kangyu scolded Long Chen with a smile. What did I tell you to do? I actually have forgotten. Are you going to hit me for that? Long Chen scratched his head awkwardly. He really forgot what he had said all that time ago. Ming Kangyu glared at him. Your memory is terrible. The two of us were originally two opposite extremes. I sent my good side into the martial heaven continent's corrupt path so that she would be dyed black, erasing that goodness. But because the two of us, with you, she blushed and glared at him viciously before continuing, because of our relationship with you, we became two separate souls. Your appearance changed our fates. Just as you said, there are no absolutes in this world. There is no absolute good or absolute evil. Based on what you said, I am evil, but my heart has goodness. My goodness is all used on you while she... Are you saying that the bit of evil in her is all focused on me? Long Chen didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Wasn't that too much of a con? Well, it's not entirely because of you. If she didn't torment you a bit, she would feel like she was the same as me. She wants her own special position, you know, said Ming Kang Yu, covering a smile. Oh, what is that mark on your forehead? Ming Kang Yu suddenly stiffened and stared in shock at Long Chen's forehead. Long Chen actually thought it was somewhere that Ling Yuan had bitten him, and just as he was about to explain, Ming Kang Yu's expression changed. This is the mark of the ghost Dao. You have had interactions with the ghost Dao. I went on to a ghost ship. Long Chen was also surprised. He quickly explained what had happened with the ghost ship. Was this mark left behind by the ghost ship? Had he really become an underworld ghost seed? Yuan, that fool she didn't notice. This mark is the most terrifying mark of the ghost sovereign. This is trouble. Ming Kang Yu's smile vanished, replaced with shock and worry. Just at this moment, Lang Yuan returned. She came to Long Chen and carefully examined his forehead. Her expression also became grave. How can this be? How can the ghost sovereign have set its sights on Long Chen? Isn't that Lang Yuan suddenly shut her mouth, as if she couldn't speak of something taboo? It hasn't set its sights on Long Chen, but on his heart devil. Long Chen, do you have a heart devil? Asked Ming Kanyu. Yes. Is that a problem? Admitted Long Chen. How can it not be a problem? Don't you realize that the Ghost Sovereign's mark is focused on your heart devil? The Ghost Sovereign is the master of one of the six Daos, the Ghost World. This mark will constantly draw out and seduce your heart devil. Once you are devoured by your heart devil, you will become a puppet of the Ghost Sovereign. Fortunately, it has been noticed in time. We don't dare to touch that mark, however, Lang Yuan, and I can temporarily seal your heart devil. That way you will be safe for now at least. We can think of something else later, said Ming Kang Yu. The two of them began to form hand seals. No, no. Lom Chen hastily waved his hands. What? The two of them were startled. My heart devil is another will of mine. He is me and I am him. If I use your power to seal him, he will look down on me. I believe that he will not be influenced by the ghost Dao's mark because he is also afraid of me looking down on him, said Long Chen. If his heart devil was sealed, it would be like losing a part of his soul. Then his Dao heart would never be clear again. It wasn't worth it. Furthermore, 
that mysterious dragon expert had long since warned him that his dark energy could not be suppressed. The more he suppressed it, the greater it would fight back. His experience also agreed with the dragon expert's words. The more he suppressed his dark energy, the more it grew. If Long Chen allowed the two of them to seal his heart devil, when his heart devil broke free of its seal, he would definitely be doomed. Furthermore, his heart devil could be considered a case of inner turmoil. If he managed to figure out the conflict, his heart devil would also disappear. There was no need to be so nervous. As for that so-called ghost sovereign's mark, he wasn't afraid. He and his heart devil were a part of him. No one understood him better than himself. All right. Since he was so sure, the two of them acquiesced. Now also wasn't the right time to seal his heart devil. Doing such a thing would use up a great deal of their core energy. As a large battle was going to start soon, they couldn't be so careless. Furthermore, Long Chen was not afraid of his heart devil, nor did he dislike it or view it with hatred. He was surprisingly relaxed, to the point that Ming Kangyu wouldn't have noticed Long Chen's heart devil without the ghost sovereign's mark. When Long Chen asked for more details about this ghost sovereign's mark, Ming Kangyu simply shook her head and said it was a very taboo name. It would be best not to mention it in the future. The ghost sovereign's mark made the two of them nervous, but Long Chen seemed very relaxed. He then told them about some interesting news in the immortal world to relax them. Just as Long Chen was spouting a bunch of nonsense, the ancient city's grand formation suddenly activated. An ear-piercing alarm split the air. Their hair, Leng Yuan and Ming Kangyu shot up and gazed into the distance. A spatial gate had opened there and countless figures were pouring out of it. Chapter 3370 Confidence in One's Backing Following That Ear-Piercing Alarm All the experts inside the city entered a combat-ready state. Lang Yuan once more activated the formation to its maximum power. It was only thanks to the formation that they could fight a heaven-tier nether king. However, last time, Lang Yuan's battle with Tuoming had ended up using quite a bit of the formation's power, and Ming Kangyu had also borrowed part of the formation's power in her breakthrough. So, the formation had yet to fully recover. Watching as countless experts poured out of the spatial gate, Long Chen quickly saw Tuo Ming's figure. He was still encased in red armor, leaving only his eyes exposed. It was very easy to recognize him. There was a horned life form beside him, one that was just as muscular as him. Also, that life form had two huge hatchets on his back. That life form emitted an overwhelming blood kai his pressure astonishing. He was also a heaven-tier nether king, most likely the overlord of a region just like Tuo Ming. Their subordinates poured out along with the two of them. Based on the colors of their armor, it could be seen that Tuo Ming's subordinates only occupied 20% of their joint army. The rest belonged to that other faction. While observing this army of millions and millions, Long Chen suddenly had a thought. He then checked the primal chaos space. Only now did he realize that the heavenly Tao tree that had been plucked clean was once more filled with new fruits. Long Chen felt a wave of excitement. It seemed that the heavenly Tao tree could also work on the netherworld's life forms. Long Chen then saw ten earth tier heavenly Tao fruit that had fully matured. He knew that they were from Tuo Ming's six Earth-tier Nether King subordinates, as well as the four Earth-tier Immortal Kings of the Nine Underworld Hall. Long Chen had killed them with the sect maintaining Divine Stone in the Heavenly Rainbow Domain. That wasn't all. The nine fruit at the very top had also grown a bit. Their runes were more concentrated, and their auras were stronger. The aura of the Heaven-tier was clearer now. It seemed that the heavenly Tao tree could only bear 9,999 fruit at once. That was its limit. No matter how many primals that Long Chen killed, their number would not increase beyond that. 
However, it would continue to absorb energy. Once the number reached its limit, the quality would increase. If he only killed ordinary primals or mortal tear or mortal kings, the heavenly Tao tree would produce the most ordinary heavenly Tao fruit that could only produce mortal tear or mortal kings. However, as he killed more and the tree absorbed more energy, the heavenly Tao fruit would grow stronger, producing spirit tear, earth tear, and heaven tear fruits. If he directly killed an earth tear immortal king, he would instantly obtain an earth tear heavenly Tao fruit. The heavenly Tao tree could hold 9,000 mortal tear fruit, 900 spirit tear fruit, 90 earth tear fruit, and 9 heaven tear fruit. Now that the 9,000 mortal tear fruit and 900 spirit tear fruit had all matured, it was the earth tear fruit's term. Looking very closely, Long Chen found that, other than the ten mature earth tier fruit, several others were also on the verge of full maturity. Previously, Long Chen had needed to use over ten non mature earth tier fruit to let Liuo Changwu become an earth tier immortal king. But now, one fully matured fruit would do the job. Based on Long Chen's reckoning, once the mortal, spirit, and earth tier fruit were fully mature, all the energy that the heavenly Tao tree absorbed would go to the heaven tier fruit, speeding up their maturity. Navalun Kam CM such a fruit could directly produce a heaven tier mortal king. Just how heaven defying was that? Seeing this endless army, Long Chen's eyes turned blue with greed. Those weren't enemies, they were fresh heavenly Tao fruits. Their full army was finally out and began to approach the city. Just their number of divine lords was already ten times that of Ling Yuan's side. The previous battle against Chuo Ming had cost Ling Yuan many of her experts, so there was a huge power disparity between the two sides now. If Chuo Ming's army had not been conned and wiped out by Long Chen, then even he wouldn't have been able to change the course of the battle. In the end, the city would have been destroyed. Normally, those earth-tier nether kings wouldn't allow someone to store up enough energy and unleash such an attack in battle. And without a full power world extermination, Flame Lotus, Long Chen wouldn't have been able to do anything. He wouldn't have been able to wipe them out without their cooperation. One thing was for sure, Tuoming wouldn't let the same thing happen this time. He wouldn't give Long Chen a chance to unleash that attack again. Lang Yuan, Ming Kang Yu, hand over the Divine Core. Otherwise, I'll destroy your city, kill your people, and make you die miserable deaths, announced Tuo Ming at the front of the army, just outside the formation's attack range. The auras of his experts fully erupted and a shocking pressure rose. They were ready to assault the city at any moment. That Divine Core was the key to controlling the laws of this region. With it, they would become the master of this region and receive the recognition of the heavenly Daos. By becoming the master of a region, they gained the recognition of the netherworld. So, only by controlling the divine core were you able to farm a region and gain all the benefits. Let's not say such big words when we're trying to have a proper conversation. To use big words in front of Boss Long San, take care not to lose your tongue. You can be arrogant, but you can't be more arrogant than me. Otherwise, I'll make you regret your words. Long Chen stood at the peak of the castle with Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu behind him. You damn bastard, you ruined things for me. Now you will make me regret it. Do you know what kind of torture you'll face if you fall into my hands? roared Tuo Ming. Success was right before him. With another heaven tier, a mortal king by his side, he considered things over. But an ant was actually driving him crazy with rage. Upon leaving the last time, he immediately looked for helpers. He then found one and decided to split the benefits of defeating Ling Yue in 4060. Furthermore, he was the 40. That was because a large portion of his troops had been wiped out. Since his companion was putting in more, he had no choice but to give the former more. How could he not be infuriated? 
Upon seeing Long Chen, he wanted to simply crush him. Torture. Are you making me laugh? What qualifications do you have to torture me? Let me tell you the truth. This castle definitely can't be defended. But do you think that I will give this piece of meat to you? You're too naive. What do you think we spent the past two days here for? I'll tell you the truth. As soon as you attack, the castle will explode, detonating the power of the Divine Core. After that, this region will once more become masterless and the disturbance will draw over countless powers. I'm sure you've decided how to split things amongst yourselves, but I don't believe the two of you will become the final masters of this region. Furthermore, we've long since made preparations to leave. We'll directly leave without you being able to even touch us. Who knows? Maybe your forces will be devoured by the explosion, and others will come to reap the benefits. Long Chen laughed sinisterly. He held up a small sphere of light. That was the Divine Core, which possessed endless power. Duo Ming and the expert beside him were stunned. The reason why Tuo Ming was in such a rush to attack this place was precisely because he wanted to settle things before other powers were alerted. If others were to interfere, it wouldn't belong to him in the end. He had to capture it before others noticed it. Furthermore, his thoughts were instantly read by Long Chen. Long Chen seemed ready to leave them with nothing for either side. HMPH, who are you trying to scare? Even if you detonate the Divine Core, we have a method to quickly condense a new one. We'll take control of this place before others arrive, snorted the expert beside Tuo Ming. His words were tough, but that was merely a front. He didn't want Long Chen to see that they were scared. Long Chen sneered, I already told you not to say any big words. I know exactly how much power you two have. If you were really that strong, you wouldn't be in such a rush to attack us. Why don't we simply gamble instead? If you win, we will obediently offer you the Divine Core with both hands. How is that? Chapter 3371 Conning a God, What's the Gamble? Asked Tuo Ming. He was unclear on what Long Chen was thinking, but he was afraid of Long Chen simply dragging everyone down with him. Long Chen said that they had spent two days getting ready to leave the destroyed castle. That sounded very logical. If he really did that, then they wouldn't be able to get anything at all. He had lost so many subordinates. If he was still unable to capture this place, he wouldn't have a good time in the future. Others might even devour his land. So, the current him could not leave here with nothing. If it weren't for the expert with dual hatchets on his back having a certain relationship with him, he wouldn't have dared to request aid from him. Otherwise, whoever he cooperated with might devour him as well. Thus, Long Chen had truly caught him in a painful position. Although Long Chen didn't know where Tuo Ming's territory was, he knew that this fellow viewed this area as a must-have. Tuo Ming had paid far too much to claim it. It's very simple. One of you will come out and have a fair fight against one of us. That will decide who will get this world. If you win, we will give you this world. This divine core will then be directly bestowed upon you, while we return to our old home, said Long Chen. And if we lose? Tuo Ming narrowed his eyes. If you lose, swear on your souls to never attack this place again. At the same time, Leave behind half your people as slaves for us, said Long Chen indifferently. What nonsense! We are clearly in a superior position. Why would we need to gamble? sneered the dual-wielding hatchet nether king. Of course. You don't need to accept. We'll just crush the divine core and everyone can leave with nothing, said Long Chen completely indifferently. Don't waste words with this brat. You can tell he's a bad person with just a glance. He definitely has some scheme. Perhaps he's just stalling for time, transmitted the hatchet wielder to Tuo Ming. In his opinion, they had absolute power. 
they could crush Long Chen and the others, so they should just launch an explosive attack. Even if Long Chen detonated the Divine Corps, with so many of them here, they would be able to reconstruct it within a few hours. Hence, this threat wasn't taken seriously by him. Tuo Ming looked at Long Chen. His heart thudded. He then replied, Better safe than sorry. After two days of preparation, they have definitely come up with something. If we really forcibly attack, and they detonate the Divine Core, the destructive power will be immense. If it draws over other powers while we have yet to condense a new Divine Core, all our efforts will go to waste. Chuo Ming was naturally more cautious because he had already lost so much. This place was very important to him. He had no choice but to be cautious. Navaloon, come then, what can we do? demanded the hatchet wielder. He clearly wasn't an expert that used schemes to obtain what he wanted. Perhaps that was precisely why Tuo Ming had chosen to ally with him. Placate him. Agree to gamble. I've ordered people to secretly start digging. As long as we have enough time, we can completely destabilize their formation without anyone being the wiser. With the loss of their formation, Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu can be instantly killed. Even if we can't stop them from detonating the Divine Core, we can definitely collect the majority of the Core's runes, which allows us to condense a new Core in just two hours at most. Then we won't need to worry about others coming, transmitted to Oming. Fine, we'll do as you say. I'll step forward and you can make your arrangements. The hatchet-wielding nether king didn't find any flaw in Tuo Ming's plan, so he stepped forward. Rat, come! Who are you sending from your side? shouted the hatchet expert. Tuo Ming cursed inside. Was this fellow an idiot? Just now, he had been completely against this gamble, and now he simply ran out. Wasn't that telling them that both of them had a plan? It would be strange if their enemies didn't suspect anything. I'll take you. However, before Tuo Ming could think of some way to reduce their suspicion, Ming Kang Yu stepped out. Remember, don't be in a rush to defeat her. Transmitted Tuo Ming. Boom. However, just as he said this, the two of them clashed. Ming Kang Yu started off with a full power attack, and the hatchet wheeled a roar. His hatchets blazed with divine light as he blocked Ming Kang Yu's bone sword. A huge explosion caused giant spatial fluctuations. After that, both sides were blown back, and the hatchet wielder almost coughed up blood. Having heard Tuo Ming's instructions, he hadn't gone all out in that exchange. But Ming Kang Yu hadn't held back in the slightest. Just as he was swallowing down the sweet sensation rising in his throat, a silent arrow shot through his shoulder. As a result, blood exploded out of his shoulder, and his divine light armor became completely ineffective. Bastard! The sudden sneak attack caught him off guard, and sharp pain racked his shoulder. At the same time, he felt his divine chi stagnate for a moment. In that one moment of sluggishness, an ancient sword cut off his head from the rear. That head had just flown up when Ming Kang Yu's sword pierced it. After that, divine light exploded. A heaven tier nether king was slain just like that. The void then twisted, and Lang Yuan's figure slowly appeared. She was the one to cut off his head. Well done! Long Chen was filled with praise. Chang Gong Hao's arrow was shot at just the right time, catching that nether king off guard and working together with Ming Kang Yu and Leng Yuan. Chang Gong Hao was a masterful archer. He took advantage of when that nether king was unsteady, shaken by Ming Kang Yu's full power attack. Furthermore, Chang Gong Hao aimed for his shoulder and not his head, making it more difficult for his enemy to sense it. This arrow contained the power of time and life energy. Under the effects of both powers, that nether king's reactions turned sluggish. Then Ming Kang Yu charged at him, while the true killing blow was Lang Yue in hiding in the void, let alone this foolish expert, whose head was very simple. 
even if he were an expert schemer, he would still easily fall for this trap. With his companion slain, Tuo Ming was shocked, enraged, and terrified. He didn't dare to believe his eyes. He looked at Long Chen and saw Lang Yuan standing right there. Seeing him looking over, Long Chen smiled and looked at the Lang Yuan beside him. That Lang Yuan also smiled and suddenly transformed into lightning rooms. A fake! You're quite sinister. Only then did Tuo Ming realize just what kind of sinister scheme he had fallen for. Pill! Just then, in the distance, hundreds of mountains exploded. Countless black armored experts appeared, unleashing a rain of arrows. Chapter 3372 Easily subdued at this moment, Tuo Ming realized that he had fallen completely for Long Chen's scheme. When Long Chen invited them to a one against one, it was to calm one of them to death before facing the last one. He felt immense regret at this moment. He had actually thought himself smart, thinking that Long Chen had no way out and could only come up with such a desperate plan to leave both sides with nothing. He had even wanted to con Long Chen. The arrows rained down. Even their armor was useless to protect them from these sharp arrows. The arrows could pierce the bodies of several experts before running out of energy. Attack the city. Tuo Ming quickly shouted. He knew that if he retreated now, they would only be live targets for these archers. Furthermore, once they retreated, the army within the city would also flood out. Once they retreated, their morale would plummet and they would be disorganized. Without the will to fight, they would collapse rapidly. Only a small portion of them would survive. If that was the case, it was better to go all out and attack the city. He believed that the city's grand formation had only recovered to at most 50% power after two days of recovery. With so many people attacking, it would definitely fall in less than an instant's stick's worth of time. They had more people. Even if he had to use all their lives, he would still have a shot at victory. Pil, Tuo Ming roared and charged at the city. His target was the grand formation. Once the formation was broken, his people would flood the city, and the arrows would no longer have a use. If he broke into the city, he would win. Oh, two bone swords crossed, sealing the world around him. After that, two slender figures appeared, blocking his path. In a clash of three gods, Tuo Ming was sent flying. This battlefield will be your burial ground, snorted Lang Yuan. Like a flicker of black lightning, she shot at Tuo Ming. Her sharp sword slashed toward his head. Tuo Ming was shocked. Combined, both of them were incredibly powerful. He suddenly had a bad feeling. Just as he was about to block Lang Yuan's sword, his expression completely changed. He felt a cold chill in his ribs. Ming Kangyu had silently appeared to his left like a flitting butterfly her bone sword piercing his side like a fiend's fang. The two of them cooperated seamlessly. Feeling shocked, Tuo Ming raised his arm. Then a circular shield appeared on it. At the same time, the spear in his right hand smashed toward Lang Yuan. He managed to stop Ming Kang Yu's bone sword from further wounding him. But Lang Yuan's sword slashed his neck, leaving a large opening in his blood-colored armor. His fresh blood flowed out. If it hadn't been for his armor, his head might have flown off. How can you be so distracted? You are playing with your life, sneered Lang Yuan. She and Ming Kang Yu were both two separate beings and one whole existence. They could share their thoughts. When one person attacked, the other instantly knew how to cooperate perfectly. Their combination was flawless. Tuo Ming had actually launched a forceful attack on them without even realizing this. He viewed them as twins, without being aware that they were far more terrifying than he gave them credit for. Bone swords whistled through the air. The chilling sharpness coming from them made Tuo Ming roar as he was forced back over and over again. He was stabbed several times and left bleeding. 
if it weren't for his armor possessing a powerful self-recovery ability he would probably have been turned into a sieve by the two of them Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu were like black butterflies flitting through the air with their black dresses and hair swirling around them. Their beauty possessed a fatal threat. Tuo Ming didn't even have the ability to counterattack. As for the battle for the city, it was chaotic. Just as Tuo Ming's subordinates charged the city, countless archers on the walls appeared like phantoms. Cold arrow tips pointed at Tuo Ming's people fire following an order hundreds of thousands of archers shot their arrows at the same time they were like bolts of lightning raining down on the attackers which then collapsed in droves seeing these archers shooting rapidly as if the arrows were free long chen was moved the longbow race truly had refined archery arts even an ordinary member of the longbow race possessed terrifying killing power it was as if they lived for archery. The runes on their arms automatically activated, giving every arrow incredible sharpness. They all aimed at the vitals of the immortal kings. Even on this chaotic battlefield, they were like falcons eyeing their prey. They were frighteningly accurate. After a single wave of arrows, hundreds of thousands of immortal kings were slain spirit tier and below immortal kings were nothing more than targets as for those beneath the immortal king level they were simply ants these archers couldn't even bother to shoot them considering it a waste of an arrow the invaders managed to reach a distance not too far from the walls but they were unable to advance past the rain of arrows after failing three times their corpses littered the ground, and they were finally too afraid to try again. Most terrifying of all was that they had had nine Earth-tier immortal kings. But after those three waves, those nine Earth-tier immortal kings had been reduced to seven. Two had been killed simply by those arrows. They had no idea where those arrows came from. They also didn't know where the archers were hidden. They were in complete chaos. Seeing that Chang Gong Hao had killed two Earth tier immortal kings, Long Chen felt a burning sensation inside. He would have to raise a group of divine archers in the Dragon Blood Legion. This kind of killing power was simply terrifying. After seeing the enemy in chaos, Long Chen returned his focus to the sky. But space was too twisted in that battlefield for him to even see what was going on. However, he could hear Tuo Ming's furious roars. Long Chen walked to the city gates and shouted, You fools! Why are you still resisting? You are lucky enough to keep your life. Shouldn't you be grateful? As long as you stop fighting and join us, I, boss Long San, swear on my soul that not a single hair on your head will be harmed. Just who do you want to follow? Of your two bosses, one is already dead and Tuo Ming will only last a few more minutes before being killed. Are you selling your lives for them? Can they see your heroism? Long Chen's voice resounded throughout the battlefield. It was like an alarm waking them up from a stupor. If both of them died, why would they need to throw their lives away? Don't listen to him. Attack! Tuo Ming's furious roar rang out, only for the distraction to result in him being injured. The sound of him coughing up blood rang out. It would have been better for him not to say anything. Now that he did, it proved that he was at an absolute disadvantage. At this moment, Long Chen waved his hand, and those archers stopped shooting. It just so happens that we need new talents to join us. Thus, I'll give you a chance. I won't force you to reply right now. You don't need to do anything at all, and you can just stand there. If you surrendered now, it would be a betrayal, so why don't we simply gamble? If Tuo Ming's head doesn't fall within an instant's stick's worth of time, I'll directly let all of you leave safely. If Tuo Ming dies, you join us. Do you accept? shouted Long Chen. Hearing this, those people lost all their backbone and simply stared at each other not knowing what to do. 
They looked up at the sky, neither accepting nor declining. Long Chen smiled. Everything was going according to his predictions. Time passed bit by bit. Suddenly, a head in a helmet fell from the sky and smashed into the ground in front of them. Looking at that head, Long Chen's smile widened. Chapter 3373 Unexpected, they couldn't see the face since the entire head was covered in a helmet. However, the helmet was badly damaged now. The head rolled in front of them. After that, space twisted, and Leng Yuein and Ming Kang Yu appeared behind Long Chen. Their bone swords were then sheathed on their backs once more, their movements identical. Now, the atmosphere grew tense. Tuo Ming's subordinates, as well as the ones brought by the hatchet wielder, gulped. They were dumbfounded. Their leaders were dead, so they had no idea what to do. It seems that I overestimated Tuo Ming. He didn't even last half an incense stick's worth of time. How disappointing. Long Chen shook his head as if Tuo Ming had let him down. He had actually made such a grave misjudgment with his estimate. All right, it's now up to you. You all have two paths. Either pledge loyalty to the great and mighty divine masters, Leng Yuean and Ming Kang Yu, or heroically die, using your deaths to display your heroism and unbending natures. We'll start from the bottom to the top. Those who want to live, step forward. Those who wish to die, stay where you are. Our archers will take your names in a bit. Thank you for your cooperation, said Long Chen indifferently. In the end, reality proved that people preferred to live. In particular, after one of the earth-tier nether kings stepped forward, the others also followed. In truth, this meant nothing to them. It didn't particularly matter who they followed. There was no need for them to throw their lives away. After all, they were not from the nether god race of the netherworld. They couldn't control their own world. As they couldn't become divine masters, it was fated for them to find a powerful divine master as a backer. In comparison, Ming Kang Yu and Ling Yuan had immense potential. Following them would definitely be better than following Tuo Ming. Most importantly, as Earth Tier Nether Kings, they possessed such power that they would receive preferential treatment wherever they went. They didn't need to worry about being killed. It was just that all Netherworld's experts had their own dignity. If Tuo Ming didn't die and they surrendered, they would have to carry the label of traitor for the rest of their lives. However, now that Tuo Ming had died, there was nothing holding them back from surrendering. There was a great difference. Long Chen could also be said to have given them face, not forcing them to make a decision before they could. As a result, millions of experts ended up joining Ming Kang Yu's side. Furthermore, they were elites that not only replenished their losses in battle, but even strengthened them by more than two fall. In this battle, Ming Kang Yu's side hadn't lost a single soldier. The divine archers had truly shocked everyone. Chang Gong Hao had managed to win face for his race, and he instantly became Ming Kang Yu's most important general. After taking them all in, Long Chen had Ming Kang Yu quickly take over the territories of those two. Those newly joined experts also helped to express their sincerity. Hence, in just a day, both their territories entered their pockets. As a result, the two of them gained control over even more of the Netherworld's laws. They obtained even more recognition from the heavenly Daos and would grow stronger. After stealthily taking over other territories, their forces grew even stronger. The two of them were delighted. Long Chen was truly their lucky star, bringing them one stroke of good fortune after another. They now controlled the cores of two more world domains. After that, they constructed channels between them and directly brought any idlers in the other two regions to this place to repair their grand formation. The two of them had found this place as a piece of masterless wilderness. Before anyone else found it, the two of them had condensed a divine core. 
giving them more territory, more recognition from the heavenly Tao's, and more power. This world domain's core was also known as the divine core. It was like a lantern in the dark, or perhaps it could be considered creating a star in the cosmos. When the star was ignited, it became a part of the operation of the heavenly dams. Whoever ignited it would contribute more merit, and would be given control over its laws. However, this so-called control was not absolute control. It was more like overseeing it. Ming Kangyu could borrow its power, but she couldn't change its natural operation. For example, when Ming Kangyu was controlling part of the netherworld's laws, she was only able to stealthily pull Long Chen from the proper path, but didn't dare to change the laws of the actual channel. One mistake, as she would also be implicated. Even a god was restricted by certain forces. It was like a pair of ancient hands were in charge of the operation of the world. Gods could only seize opportunities and gain some benefits from that operation. But they didn't dare to defy the heavens. Through this understanding, Long Chen found that the world that they controlled was like a mirror or perhaps a duplicate, a superposition. It was connected to another world, but that world was something that they could only see, not interact with. Long Chen asked Lang Yuan about that world, but Lang Yuan shook her head, not letting him ask about it. After all, Long Chen wasn't a god. It wasn't appropriate for him to learn about those things lest she caused unfortunate karma to befall him. She only told him that the netherworld's nether god race were overseers of the laws, but not the creators. There were many secrets within the nine heavens and ten lands that were not available for him to ask about. Just three days after taking into Oming's subordinates, an unexpected thing occurred that shocked Long Chen, Ming Kangyu, and Leng Yuan. Long Chen actually broke through to the eighth heaven stage of four peak here. Long Chen was clearly from the immortal world. Theoretically, he needed to absorb the spiritual Kai of the immortal world and rely on the help of the immortal world's laws to advance. However, it seemed that Long Chen wasn't restricted by this requirement. He had been constantly consuming pills as usual. Seeing that the pills were absorbed quite well, he hadn't paid too much attention to it. But he hadn't expected to actually advance here. Even Ming Kangyu and Leng Yuan had no explanation for such a thing. When they first met, Leng Yuan had used her sword to insert her own divine rune into his body to prevent him from being rejected by the netherworld's laws. That would prevent his realm from falling and affecting his cultivation. However, that rune couldn't possibly change a person's entire constitution. Furthermore, the aura within Long Chen's body was still a mortal spiritual kai, but he had still advanced. It was inexplicable. This advancement made Long Chen think that the nine star hegemon body art was a heaven defying cultivation technique that could defy the laws of heaven and earth. However, that also seemed wrong. That was because nine star heirs only appeared in the immortal world. There were no nine star heirs in the netherworld. Even after racking their brains, they were unable to figure it out. Long Chen directly gave up and continued to cultivate in the netherworld. He naturally wouldn't give up any chance to improve himself. Originally, Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu should have been in a rush to develop their new land, but Long Chen asked them to accompany him in training. The two of them truly cooperated with him. In an instant, he was filled with bloody holes. They didn't give him any face at all. Their cooperation technique was seamless. Even with Long Chen's combat experience, he was forced back wretchedly. Even though both of them suppressed their realms to the same level as Long Chen, Long Chen was left covered in blood after every fight. If it was a true battle, it was unknown just how many times he would have died. Three days later, another explosion echoed within Long Chen's aura. His aura explosively charged to the ninth heaven stage of Four Peak. Chapter 3374 Crisis arrives Long Chen was covered in blood, 
and his flesh was exposed in many spots. But his aura was thrumming powerfully. Kai waves surged out of him, shaking the surrounding space. Min Kang Yu and Ling Yuan became his sparring partners, so naturally they would give him the strictest training. Although they did their best to avoid vitals, they still pushed Long Chen to the brink of death to constantly draw out his potential. In this state, the peakless pills were constantly absorbed. It was unknown if it was because of the change in surroundings, but Long Chen advanced even easier. It took him three days to rise from the eighth heaven stage to the ninth heaven stage. That was something that Long Chen hadn't dared to even dream of. What power! His blood, flesh, tendons, bones, essence, kai, and spirit all increased. There aren't four peaks at all. His cultivation technique is truly astonishing, said Ming Kang Yu in shock. Even as a god who oversaw countless races and had seen countless ways that the heavenly Taoists could manifest, she had never seen such a heaven-defying cultivation technique. Again, Long Chen was revitalized. Ming Kang Yu and Ling Yuan were practically bullying him, but it was precisely this state that allowed him to absorb the peakless pills faster. This was a rare chance for him to rapidly improve himself so he definitely couldn't miss it. Under their combined attacks, Long Chen remained at an absolute disadvantage. With their minds connected, their attacks came in an unending stream that didn't give him the slightest opening. As soon as he attacked, he faced a lethal counterattack. If he didn't defend, he would be hacked to death. After his training with Luo Zichuan, Long Chen had gained a far higher understanding of the principles of techniques. In the face of any expert, there was always a chance to attack and defend. Even if it was against an enemy that could not be beaten, that was simply due to them possessing absolute power, not because his technique was inferior. However, against Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu, none of his techniques was useful. The support of the heavenly Daos, meaningless. That was because both of them were gods. They were the heavens, and they were in control of this territory's laws. Unless Long Chen became a god as well in charge of the world's laws, there was no way he could fight them. Their power made him think of his 108,000 stars. He was also the master of his own world, but he couldn't control the laws like the two of them. At most, he could control some of their power, but the existence known as laws was not something he had come into contact with yet. Long Chen trained during the day and recovered during the night. Accompanied by these two beautiful gods, every day was a painful joy. Seven days later, Long Chen advanced again to reach the tenth heaven stage. Ming Kang Yu had thought that he would be advancing to the Divine Lord realm, not knowing that he had thirteen heaven stages. The explosive power of the tenth heaven stage was so great that Long Chen needed some time to get accustomed to it. So, he had no choice but to settle down. Based on his estimates, the power of his physical body had almost doubled from the ninth heaven stage. And it wasn't just his physical body, his blood kai, spiritual strength, and even his 108,000 stars had all changed. He needed to get used to his new power for now. If he continued crazily climbing realms, his foundation would grow unstable. With Long Chen getting accustomed to his new cultivation base, Ming Kang Yu and Ling Yuan hastily got to work on their new territories. It was three days later that Long Chen just barely managed to control his new power. It was also at this time that they received information that this wild territory had drawn the attention of other powers. Furthermore, this time it was even worse. Multiple powers had noticed and sent spies to keep an eye on them. They were just like Tuo Ming, looking for their chance. What made Ming Kang Yu uneasy was that these powers were very cool-headed. They only watched from the dark. If Long Chen hadn't helped them set up an alarm system around their new territories, they might not have even noticed the spies. The alarm system was some threads he had brought from the immortal world. 
These threads didn't exist in the netherworld, so they could be well hidden. When someone touched them, they would break without drawing any attention. The minute that they were broken, the connected photographic jades activated, recording what was happening. It was only due to this that they knew they had been targeted once more. Based on the various races and equipment of these newcomers, there were multiple powers this time. Right now, their only advantage was that the other side was unaware that they had been noticed. So, Long Chen and the others continued to act like they were in the dark. That very night, the two of them discussed with Long Chen how to handle this new problem. Although they were also gods when it came to scheming, they couldn't compare to Long Chen. After looking at the recordings, Long Chen pondered for a long time before saying it seems that right at the start, there were at least six waves of people who came to spy on us. However, those spies silently left after looking at us. They are very cautious and resolute. You mean that? Ming Kang Yu's heart fell. Long Chen nodded. It seems that those powers have an agreement. They know each other and have yet to decide on their next step. That was what I was most worried about, said Ming Kang Yu. If six powers truly allied to attack them, then there was no way that they could win. Furthermore, those scouts were no fools. Chuo Ming's army had previously attacked this place, and that left scars that had yet to be cleaned up. Through those scars, they could get a general understanding of their power. Their enemies would not attack until they were sure to succeed. It would be a thunderous attack that didn't give Ming Kang Yu any chance to win. If my guess is correct, they are most likely sitting together, discussing how to attack us, how many soldiers every side should contribute, and how they will split the spoils afterward, said Long Chen. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu nodded. That was very likely. If they wanted to attack together, they would need to make a plan and gather their forces. Ming Kang Yu's side now had four strongholds. One was their old initial home. One was this place. And two more were taken from Tuo Ming and the other expert. Those strongholds all needed trusted people guarding them. If their enemies were to attack one place, they would be doomed. So Lang Yuan needed to make some preparations. Suddenly, Ming Kang Yu took out a mirror. Six small red dots flashed on it. We've found them. Long Chen had not just set up an alarm system. Anyone who touched those threads would be infected by a specific energy, which was something Ming Kang Yu had put in. Through this faint energy, she could find the other side's position. Since we've found them, let's not wait. We'll make the first move. Long Chen clenched his fist. This time, it would probably be a bit dangerous. Chapter 3375, The Netherworld's Black Sea, but we don't know anything about them. How are we supposed to attack? Asked a startled Ming Kang Yu. That's why I said it would be a bit dangerous. We don't have time to accurately judge their bottom line. They are going to attack soon, and they view us as a piece of fat meat. As soon as they have a rough plan, they'll be sure to attack. If it's six against one, how will we win? There's no need for us to plan anything. Let's just attack. That's our only chance, said Long Chen. All right, we'll listen to you. What plan do you have? said Ming Kang Yu. When it came to this kind of experience, she knew that she couldn't compare to Long Chen. Gather the troops. You and Lane Yuan will each lead a group. Look at their positions. Their territories are a semicircle around us. You'll attack the ones furthest from the center. Based on their locations, their meeting is being held in one of these two locations, either here or here. Long Chen pointed at two of the red spots at the center. Our greatest advantage is that they don't know we've noticed them. While their masters aren't present, we can easily break through the formations of their territories and destroy their divine cores. Once the first core is destroyed, immediately move to the next target. If they return to defend, 
we will immediately retreat. If they don't defend, continue destroying them. How can they not return to defend? Are you? Lang Yuan looked at Long Chen in shock. We'll split into three paths. I will go directly to them and start a party with them, said Long Chen. Unacceptable. Are you trying to draw their attention? I'd rather give up on this place than take that risk. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu's expressions changed. This idea was absolutely crazy. They could not accept it. Long Chen smiled. I'm no fool. Do you think I would send myself to my death? I've prepared my way out. Long Chen explained what he was thinking. The two of them were still a bit hesitant, but after hearing what he told them, they truly felt that it wasn't too risky Navalun. Come ultimately, after Long Chen pushed them, they agreed to this crazy idea. Long Chen then instantly took off his clothes. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu pressed their hands against his chest. After that, Black Kai swirled out and the laws of the netherworld weaved together, forming a black cloak around Long Chen. This cloak was created by the laws of the netherworld. It was the specific power of a nether god. Due to Long Chen and the two of them having been intimate, he was already touched by the aura of nether gods. So, with this set of robes, his aura was just like that of a nether god. However, there was no way to cover up his aura of the Four Peak Realm. Long Chen's original bone saber had been damaged in the chaotic flow of time, and in their training session, Lang Yuan had ended up cutting it apart. For now, Long Chen lacked a suitable weapon. Lang Yuan then found a jagged saber in Tuo Ming's treasure. It was the weapon of a god with its specific aura. It was seven feet long and as heavy as a mountain, but it didn't feel too comfortable in Long Chen's hands. It was just barely usable. After putting this sinister jagged saber on his back, he looked at himself in the mirror and no longer recognized himself. Lang Yuan had also modified his appearance a bit, adding a full beard to his face. He definitely looked big and powerful. A murderous R then surged out of him, and he appeared exceptionally domineering. Lang Yuan gave him a J talisman, his life-saving talisman. As soon as the situation turned sour, as long as he fled out of the opposing side's grand formation, this talisman would directly bring him back to their territory. However, the two of them were worried that facing so many gods, Long Chen wouldn't have any chance to crush it. Long Chen seemed assured of himself, though. As long as the other side didn't have a combination technique like Ling Yuan and Ming Kang Yu, he wasn't afraid. Even if it was against heaven-tier immortal kings, he was confident that he could get away. After his disguise was finished, their army gathered. The three of them stealthily set out, directly using the formation to reach the edge of their territory. Outside of this region, the land was wilderness. There were no laws here, but there was mist, like the land was a mass of primal chaos. Suddenly, a river blocked their path. The water was as black as ink and filled with the aura of death. It also gave off a violent, tyrannical smell. This aura, it seems similar to the Devil Sea. Long Chen eyed that black water with surprise. Don't get close to the Black Sea. There are fiend spirits down below. If you disturb them, we'll be in trouble. If you end up drawing out some primal chaos species, we might even be completely wiped out, said Ming Kang Yu when she saw him reach out to touch the black water. Long Chen was startled. It seemed that the netherworld was full of taboos and dangers. Even gods had to be so careful. Ling Yue informed Han Seals and murmured something. After that, Black Kai swirled, condensing into a small boat. The boat then flew out of her hand, and by the time it landed on the water, it became a giant ship many miles long. Long Chen and the others entered the ship, which slowly flowed across the water. There were over a hundred thousand experts on the ship, none of whom dared to even make a sound. 
They were all terrified of this black water. The netherworld's black sea is like a network of blood vessels. It is so deep that you can't see the bottom. The fiend spirits inside are not part of the six dows, and they possess a bizarre power. Thus, unless people have no choice, they will not cross the black sea. One mistake, and they will be buried at the bottom of the sea. Yuan and I crossed seven regions of the Black Sea because we had no other choice. Only then did we find this wild territory to take over. Now that I think back to it, with our cultivation bases of that time, it really was dangerous, said Ming Kangyu. Long Chen's heart warmed. He held Ming Kangyu and Lang Yuan's hands. He knew that the reason they had no choice was because of him. To have driven two gods to the point of such desperation to get stronger, he was extremely moved. This particular section of the Black Sea is very wide. If we didn't have a target, we wouldn't dare to go through such a wide stretch. I trust that they also wouldn't dare to do such a thing. Most likely, the battle last time drew their attention, and they only crossed this section because they knew our general direction, said Ming Kangyu. Tuo Ming's territory was separated from theirs by two sections of the Black Sea. They were both very active sections as well. Tuo Ming himself had never crossed it before since he didn't know that there was anything worthwhile beyond it. It was only when Leng Yuan attacked the Nether King realm that his attention was drawn and he crossed over. This section of the Black Sea was very wide. Even now, Leng Yuan and Ming Kangyu were nervous about crossing it. They were as careful as possible. As for Long Chen, he was lost in thought. Back in the Heavenly Rainbow Fairy's mental domain, he had seen the full view of the Nine Heavens and Ten Lands. Back then, he saw endless nebulas and also countless vessels connecting the nebulas, but he still didn't know what those vessels were. Was this Black Sea the Netherworld's vessels? After three days, they finally reached the other shore. Leng Yuan and Ming Kangyu sighed with relief. As for the others, it was as if they had been relieved from a heavy burden. Everything's going according to plan. Don't worry about me. Long Chen hugged both of them tightly. With the jagged saber on his back, he set off in a certain direction. Chapter 3376 Forceful Visit Ming Kang Yu and Leng Yuan were worried for Long Chen, but they knew Long Chen's stubbornness. If they didn't let him go, it would be equivalent to not trusting him. Although they were gods, they had fallen for this fellow. Even as gods, they were still women. Long Chen himself wasn't worried at all. He was extremely confident and felt full of power. After advancing to the Tenth Heaven stage, he found that the divine flame power of his 108,000 stars had changed. Previously, he was completely bound by Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu's combination technique. They were gods and in control of the laws. That was naturally a powerful suppression. However, after reaching the Tenth Heaven stage, his shaken confidence was boosted. Although he was still unable to counterattack against their combination, that was simply because their combination was so perfect. After all, not all heaven tier nether kings could be such monsters. If it weren't for that combination technique, after reaching the tenth heaven stage, Long Chan was confident that he had the power to fight a heaven tier immortal king. That was because even the pressure of a god was no longer so effective on him. Long Chen took out a compass and rushed off in a certain direction. After a while, the mist in front of him gradually faded. This desolate land changed, and the aura of the divine Tao appeared. The laws of the netherworld enveloped him. I wonder if my luck is still terrible in the netherworld. I suppose I'll know soon. Long Chen continued, quickly seeing a giant city. He smiled. He then found a place to hide. After waiting two hours, Lang Yuan and Ming Kangyu sent him a message. Everything was going according to plan. The other side was definitely too confident and hadn't even activated their formations. 
they truly viewed them as merely a fat piece of meat noveloon kam long chen pulled up his hood fixing his appearance after his appearance was perfect he walked toward that city the city was very ancient and had almost no guards it was only when he reached the gates that people noticed him who goes there Bu. long chen simply kicked the gates in reply the giant gates were blown off smashing into the buildings behind them and destroying quite a few of them enemy attack a startled cry rang out in the panic long chen saw countless experts rushing over things were chaotic long chen had entered the city by the time the defensive formation was activated the city was in chaos countless experts came flying out of the buildings and a cold shout suddenly shook the heavens raise an interloper you dare to invade this king's territory this voice was one with the Tao and contained unquestionable dignity. This was definitely the voice of a god. Following that, six streams of divine aura descended and six black-robed experts appeared. One of them was particularly infuriated, but when he saw Long Chen, he was startled. They saw a god, but this god was only at the peak of the four-peak realm. And yet, he gave them quite a strong sense of pressure long chen smiled as expected his luck was as heaven defying as ever wherever he went it followed him originally long chen had been hoping to run into an empty city devoid of the six of them then he could just plunder it at that time lang yuan would have destroyed one city ming kang would have destroyed one and he would have destroyed one then three of these experts would lose the support of the netherworld's divine Daos. If that was the case, Long Chen could definitely handle the three of them. At that time, Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu would be able to handle two against three. Although they were fighting far from their territory, their seamless combination fighting style would still give them an advantage. Then if the other side chose not to try and regain their lost territory, the two of them could directly condense new divine cores and gain even greater authority over the laws of the netherworld. It could be said that running into the six of them was the worst option, but he really did run into them. Just who could compare to him when it came to luck? You really are brazen. You dare to fight this lord over my meat. Long Chen arrogantly looked down on those gods. What are you talking about? The six of their expressions changed. This lord doesn't like wasting time. Let's get straight to the point. The territory that you've noticed is a gift my master left to me for when I advanced to the netherlord realm. You dare to place your sights on it? Are you tired of living? Long Chen arrogantly started walking toward the six of them. Bullshit. It was clearly a masterless territory that God had just opened his mouth when Long Chen slapped him in the face. The swizzened old elder was sent flying, smashing through countless buildings. Some people were unable to dodge in time and were directly killed. They hadn't expected that a little four-peak weakling would dare to attack them, let alone in his unguarded state. Even if he had been prepared, it would have been very difficult for him to dodge Long Chen's slap at this distance. You the other five were shocked and enraged. They had been bewildered by Long Chen's cultivation base and how he managed to give them such a huge sense of pressure. There were many bizarre aspects of his appearance that befuddled them. As they hadn't expected him to suddenly attack one of them, their divine auras instantly erupted. What? Why don't you try and touch a single hair on my body? My master is a world master. The likes of you will be crushed by a single swat of him, sneered Long Chen. The five of them instantly froze. A world master was equivalent to a world king in the immortal world. What was different from the immortal world was that a world master possessed greater authority in the nether world. They were in control of countless territories. Many nether kings wanted to find a world master as a backer. With a world master as a backer, a portion of their laws in their territories would be even more complete. It was very helpful to their future cultivation. 
nether kings like them that relied on taking over wild territories like this were essentially like rogue cultivators in the immortal world. They weren't qualified to even talk to a world master. Thus, when Long Chen mentioned a world master, they stopped. If Long Chen really was a disciple of a world master, then they truly didn't dare to touch a single hair on his head. Bastard died just then. The elder that Long Chen had slapped came charging back, his fingers clawing toward him. The five of them hastily dragged him back. As a result, in the chaos, Long Chen effortlessly stepped forward and slapped that elder again. The elder coughed up blood and was sent flying once more, this time going even higher and faster. Just as Long Chen was looking at how far he was going to go, a sharp claw suddenly pierced out of the void, piercing that elder's body. Long Chen and the others jumped in shock. Space twisted, revealing a sinister life form. When they saw that life form, the five gods were instantly terrified. Quick, activate the formation. The master of this territory shouted in panic. Chapter 3377 Sudden Change The Grand Formation was activated to its maximum power, and countless runes condensed. After that, a mighty aura rose. Long Chen himself was shocked. The elder that he had slapped had been pierced in the chest by this strange life form. That life form's sharp claws gleamed coldly, and its body was somewhat similar to a human. However, its clothes were worn and torn, and the flesh within those clothes was already rotting. It emitted surges of black kai, like some ancient corpse that had crawled out of a tomb. The ghost Dao's aura. Long Chen was shocked. At this moment, more life forms were appearing, and their auras were identical to the life forms he had encountered on the ghost ship. Ghost Kai swirled around them. Just looking at that ghost Kai gave people a piercing pain in their souls. It was as if they could smell the scent of death and decay. The void then exploded, and countless life forms began to appear like a flood. As for the slapped elder, he screamed and was devoured by those life forms. Countless life forms of the ghost Dao charged the city and smashed into the formation, exploding and transforming into corrosive dust. Despite that, they continued to pour out, with more coming behind them. It was as if they were crazy. Behind this army of the ghost Dao, Long Chen saw a long spatial crack. Their army was pouring out of there. They were crazily attacking the formation, simply throwing their numbers at it. Ear piercing cries split the air. Just watching their crazy appearance gave Long Chen the chills. Fuck what is going on? shouted Long Chen. Junior brother, we have encountered the hunters of the Bos Dao. The grand formation won't last that long. Hurry and beg your master for aid. Otherwise, we'll all die. One of the gods practically begged Long Chen. He was their only hope. The hunters of the ghost Dao were like leopards from the ghost world. They roamed the edges between the nether world and the ghost world. In packs, they waited for the barriers between worlds to rub against each other and then tore through the void to hunt. They cultivated through devouring the nether world's life forms. Furthermore, smelling the scent of the nether world's life forms drove them crazy with greed. They would become completely unafraid of death. Although their individual power wasn't very strong, they had terrifyingly sharp claws and teeth. Once wounded, the invasion of Ghost Kai was something that even gods couldn't endure. As more of them poured out, the formation was visibly starting to dim. Although countless Ghost Dao lifeforms had been destroyed by the formation, it didn't stop the rest from charging forward crazily. They were truly unafraid of death. Long Chen looked at these ghost Dao hunters. Some were humanoid, and some had beast form. They came in all kinds of forms. Their eyes already dried up, but they still stared at them like bloodthirsty beasts that had been starving for countless years. The urgent desire to quench their thirst was so powerful that others were terrified just watching them. Junior brother, don't hesitate. Once the city is broken into, we'll all die. 
What else are you waiting for? Those gods all shouted in a panic when they saw Long Chen just staring at those life forms thoughtfully. Do I need you to tell me that? I've already asked my master for aid. I trust that it won't be long before that help arrives. No need to worry, said Long Chen. Hearing that, the five of them seemed to feel much more at ease. Long Chen had now become their only hope. In order to buy more time, the five of them spread their arms. Divine light flowed out of their hands and into the formation. They used their own nether god energy to support the formation. With their support, the formation brightened. Countless life forms crashed into it and died. It seemed that they could still endure for a while. As for Long Chen, he was extremely worried. What if Leng Yuan and the others had encountered these life forms as well? He was currently isolated from the rest of the world by the formation. He had no way of communicating with them here, and he could not think of any good ideas. Suddenly, two of the experts coughed up blood. Their auras plummeted and their expressions completely changed. Not good. The divine cores in our domains have been broken. The two of them shouted in shock and fury, as well as terror. It seemed that Leng Yuan and Meng Kangyu had made their move at the same time, crushing them at the same time. That meant that things on those two sides were going according to plan. They hadn't encountered an attack from the ghost Dao. Don't panic. Perhaps your territories were also sneak attacked. Hold on. My master will quickly save us, shouted Long Chen. Having lost their divine cores, those two were severely weakened. Their auras dropped by more than 30%. Hearing that, the two of them didn't overthink it. Right now, protecting their lives was more important. They continued supporting the grand formation. They were anxious, but Long Chen was even more anxious. If Leng Yuan and the others continued according to the plan, they would soon reach this place. When they saw that he was trapped, they would definitely go all out to save him. Eyeing this endless army, he shook his head. The aura coming from these life forms could not be judged according to the realms of the human race. They seemed to simply be corpses. Supposedly, they must have been very terrifying life forms when they were alive. Right now, they were a little more than skin and bones. Some didn't possess the slightest trace of blood and were essentially skeletons. Those that did possess some flesh clearly had slightly stronger auras. As for that life form that had struck the slain elder, it seemed to possess a certain intelligence. It didn't charge the formation. It was constantly howling, ordering the other life forms to attack. Through his examination, he also noticed that the ones that had devoured the elder seemed to have a bit more blood kai energy. That showed why these life forms would go so crazy for the netherworld's experts. After devouring them, they would be nourished by their flesh, and their own bodies would regain some flesh, making them stronger. At this moment, another elder coughed up blood. His divine core was also broken. Lang Yuan and Ming Kangyu had attacked the next two targets. The other divine core had to belong to that elder that had been consumed. Now Long Chan was even more anxious. Just then, the formation began to shudder. Countless cracks appeared on it. Hold on. You must hold on. My master will quickly arrive, shouted Long Chen. But they were truly unable to. One of the life forms suddenly bit down on the barrier, striking it right at its weakest spot and tearing open a hole. Countless life forms came flying into the barrier. The city's experts cried out. Boom! Just then, the barrier shattered. The flood of ghost Dao life forms howled and flooded over them from all directions. Chapter 3378 Taking a Risk The Formation Was Broken the city was flooded by an endless army of the ghost Dao's life forms. As a result, miserable screams rose and the city instantly became a living hell. The netherworld's experts were torn apart by the ghost Dao's life forms. 
flesh and blood flew through the air. It was truly a terrifying sight. Hold on. My master will soon arrive, shouted Long Chen. If nothing else, this could come those five fellows into protecting him. The five of them immediately took out their weapons and started slaughtering these life forms. They were still hoping for Long Chen's so-called master to come save them. If they wanted to stay alive, they had to make sure that Long Chen didn't die. However, there were too many ghost Dao life forms, and of the five of them, only two of them were at full power. The others had lost the support of their territories, so they were quickly riddled with wounds from those life forms' teeth and claws. When will your master arrive? We'll all die if it takes any longer, shouted one of them. Soon, very soon. We're just a bit off, shouted Long Chen, making a show of earnestly checking a jade tablet. This was actually the jade talisman to teleport him out, but he didn't dare to use it. If he tried to, the five of them might instantly kill him. Ah, uh, another god suddenly had half his body devoured by a life form with a crocodile's head. The others wanted to save him, but too many enemies instantly pounced on them. That nether god was instantly torn apart. The life forms that devoured him had their withered bodies grow plump. Their auras also grew stronger. No, with the loss of that nether god, the situation grew even more dire. Another one was immediately dragged away, his corpse split between those life forms. They were no longer able to protect Long Chen. So, Long Chen took out his saber and started fighting himself as he hid behind the other nether gods. The rest of the city had been devoured. It was just Long Chen and the other three barely hanging on. Long Chen glanced at the distant spatial crack and found that at some point it had closed. And suddenly Long Chen kicked the city lord's butt, sending him tumbling forward. This elder had never expected Long Chen to do such a thing. The loss in balance resulted in him being instantly devoured. What are you doing? The remaining two were shocked, not understanding why Long Chen would harm them. Just as they were bewildered, they were drowned by the army of life forms. As for Long Chen himself, he shot away. Right now, he was the only person remaining in the city. An endless tide of ghost Dao life forms charged at him from below. While flying through the air, lightning wings spread on his back. He shot into the distance and swung his saber behind him. Boom! A giant saber image slashed down. Countless life forms were exterminated, but many powerful life forms endured it and continued chasing. Long Chen was fleeing at the front, and an endless army of the ghost Dao life forms were chasing him from behind, looking like a long dragon refusing to give up on hunting its prey. Split the heavens! Long Chen suddenly turned back and slashed down his saber. As a result, the closest life forms were blasted apart and tens of thousands of them were slain. However, that was practically nothing to this army. It merely slowed them down for a moment. What infuriated Long Chen was that the Jade Talisman was ineffective. These life forms seemed to emit a strange force field that blocked the talisman's function. Most likely, he would need to fly a certain distance away from them in order to use the talisman. But these life forms were like glue, refusing to leave him alone. Wait a minute. I'm not from the netherworld. Why are you chasing me? Long Chen shouted as he ran. But those life forms ignored his shout and continued chasing. Wherever they went, the ground was torn asunder, leaving ruins and desolation in their wake. Long Chen was as quick as lightning, but those life forms were not slow. Some winged ones were even faster than Long Chen. In just a few seconds, they were right behind him. With no other choice, Long Chen used to split the heavens once more, resolving the danger before him temporarily. But he knew he couldn't keep doing this. Although he had advanced to the tenth heaven stage after unleashing split the heavens thirty-six times in a row, his spiritual yuan was starting to drop. 
As for that army, he didn't see any change in their numbers. If this continued, his spiritual Ewan would run out before he killed even a tenth of them. Fuck what is this luck? Long Chen cursed furiously. Everything had been planned, only for these ghosts to come out. Long Chen was unable to understand. Even if these life forms were to mince him, each one wouldn't even be able to obtain a single speck of him, no. But they still refused to give up. It seemed that they wouldn't give up until they devoured him. He was so infuriated that he got a stomach ache. Wait, could it be? Were they after me from the start? Long Chen's heart suddenly sank. If they really were targeting him, how could he? Someone at the Four Peak Realm who wasn't even a life form of the Netherworld caused this giant army of life forms of the Ghost Dao to chase after him. Is it due to the Ghost Dao mark? But we should be on the same side then. Why would we kill each other? Long Chen was repeatedly attacking, leaving behind countless corpses. But these life forms never gave up. Not one chose to stop chasing. If this continues, I'll have to take a risk. Long Chen took a deep breath. A determined expression appeared in his eyes. Clenching his teeth, he shot off in a certain direction. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu led their people at full speed to the final city. But they were stunned by what they saw. The city was in ruins. There was blood everywhere, and the smell was nauseating. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu quickly scoured the city and found several weapons belonging to nether gods. But those weapons' runes had long since dimmed and shattered. Their masters were already dead. Not good. This place was attacked by the ghost Dao hunters. Their expressions changed when they saw the countless corpses of the ghost Dao hunters within the city. It's that direction. Let's go. Lang Yuan looked into the distance. There was a giant ditch in one direction, and the two of them immediately set off with their people. Long Chen, you have to be all right. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu prayed inside. Their hearts clenched. They had never imagined that this place would suddenly be sneak attacked by the ghost Dao hunters. Chapter 3379 The Terrifying Black Sea Boom Black sea water exploded, unleashing huge waves. Long Chen then shot through the air. The ghost Dao's life forms refused to give up, and they smashed right into the Black Sea. Following that, many auras that gave Long Chen chills rose out of the depths of the water. Long Chen instantly had a bad feeling. His lightning wings quivered, and he suddenly shot straight up into the air. Boop! A giant mouth suddenly flew out of the Black Sea, devouring those life forms. After that, the surface of the water bulged crazily. One sea monster after another came out, devouring these life forms of the ghost Dao. As far as the eye could see, the black water was roiling. Sea monsters devoured the ghost Dao's life forms. In return, they also began to attack the sea monsters. Everything became chaotic for a while. However, the majority of the ghost Dao life forms were still targeting Long Chen. With no other way, Long Chen dived into the Black Sea. Following him, the ghost Dao's life forms also plunged into the water. Everything was pitch black within the Black Sea. He couldn't see any light. Moreover, his divine sense was suppressed to the limit. This sea felt like an unknown world that innately drew out the terror in people's hearts. Long Chen's speed was impacted. But those life forms behind him were affected even more. This disturbance drew out countless sea monsters. Some of them had ours even more terrifying than a heaven tier nether king. However, the ghost Dao life forms were also powerful. If they weren't killed, they also tore back at the sea monsters. As a result, many sea monster corpses floated to the surface of the water. Long Chen then latched himself onto the head of a shark sea monster. Now matter how it struggled, it couldn't shake him off. This was his only chance at survival. Even if he tired himself to death, 
he couldn't kill the entire army of the ghost Dal lifeforms. He could only provoke the creatures of the Black Sea to create a chaotic battle. These ghost Dal lifeforms didn't seem to have any intelligence. They only fought instinctively. They had numbers, but fortunately, there were plenty of sea monsters as well. The disturbance continued to draw over countless sea monsters. Hence, both sides crazily slaughtered each other. Within the water, Long Chen was constantly dodging attacks from both sides. Ultimately, it was the Black Sea's monsters that were more powerful. The ghost Dao's lifeforms were being killed, and countless corpses were floating on the surface of the water. Once their numbers were whittled down enough, Long Chen felt that with his power he should be able to handle the rest. So, he prepared to fly out. After all, the sea monsters wouldn't walk onto land. Even if they did, they wouldn't be fast enough to threaten him. However, just as he tried to break out of the surface of the water, he became dumbfounded. There seemed to be an elastic barrier at the top of the water. He tried several times, but was forced back down every time. How can this be? Long Chen's heart turned cold, and he finally felt fear. If he couldn't get out, he would be forever sealed within the Black Sea. Furthermore, he saw that the ghost Dao lifeforms sank into the sea when they died. The corpses floating on the surface were only sea monsters. Long Chen tried to climb out on their corpses, but whenever he got close to reaching the surface, the corpse he was climbing on say. There was no way for him to climb out. Furthermore, he was starting to feel unwell the longer he stayed beneath the surface. It was like he was drowning. Every breath was laborious, and his chest hurt. What is with this Black Sea? Long Chen finally understood why even gods like Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu were so afraid of the Black Sea. Finally, all the ghost Dao's life forms were slain, and the sea monsters turned their attention to him. There was no difference between the ghost Dao life forms and Long Chen to them. Long Chen. Just then, he heard a panicked shout. He was delighted. That was Ling Yuan's voice. They had come at this critical moment. I'm over here, Long Chen shouted. However, he found that no sound came out. Even he himself couldn't hear it. Long Chen, where are you? Ming Kang Yu was almost sobbing as she shouted. She was out of her wits. She looked through the endless corpses floating on the surface of the water, but she couldn't find Long Chen. Long Chen then took out the Netherbod tablet, hoping to communicate with them. But when he took it out, he found that its energy was completely blocked. Long Chen was shocked. So, he took out his saber and attacked the surface of the water. However, his saber image merely caused the tiniest ripples. With the water being covered by so many corpses, no one could possibly notice. Long Chen. Long Chen. Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu continued to shout. Their voices came from different directions. They were clearly looking all over for him. Long Chen seemed to be caught in a nightmare. Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu's voices were getting further and further away. Only at that moment did Long Chen realize that he had sunk many miles from the surface. He was actually in the process of sinking. Bastard, don't go down, go up. Long Chen was startled. He shook the shark's head, trying to order it up. However, his spiritual strength had almost no effect in this black water. He couldn't control the sea monster. What to do? What to do? Long Chen felt like he was drowning. He tried to grasp at his last hope, but couldn't. He had never felt so powerless. This black sea was practically a cursed sea that stripped him of all his power. There must be a way. Calm down, calm down. Long Chen forcibly suppressed his emotions. Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu's voices were so far away that he could barely hear them now. Divine Ring. Battle Armor. Long Chen could no longer worry about anything else. With a furious roar, his divine ring blasted apart the water. 
Moon golden dragon scales covered his body. At the same time, an illusory figure appeared behind him. It was a long dragon tail. With a swish of that tail, Long Chen shot out like an arrow toward the surface of the water. A giant wave exploded out of the water. Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu instantly noticed it, and they also saw Long Chen within the wave. However, even that wasn't enough for Long Chen to break free from the surface of the water. He bounced back like there was an elastic barrier at the surface of the water. The wave he made settled back down. Long Chen, don't panic. This is one of the laws of the Black Sea. Just hold on. Yu Yuan and I will save you. Seeing that Long Chen was trying to break free himself, Ming Kang Yu shouted. She knew that those that were devoured by the Black Sea could not come out alone. They needed help from the outside. Ming Kang Yu and Lang Yuan crossed their swords. The nether god mark on their foreheads lit up brilliantly. However, when the black water was illuminated by this light, their expressions suddenly changed. Seeing that, Long Chen had a bad feeling. He hastily looked down. He saw countless lanterns glowing from deep below the surface of the water. When he looked more closely, he almost pissed himself. Those lanterns were pairs of fiendish eyes. They were slowly approaching him with sinister auras. Chapter 3380 Black Sea's Fiend Spirits What Are Those? Long Chen felt like his hair was about to stand on end. From Leng Yuan and Ming Kang Yu's terrified expressions, he knew that those were most likely the fiend spirits that they were most afraid of. Furthermore, there wasn't just one of them, but millions. As they got closer, he saw that they were somewhat humanoid. However, they had frog like legs and smooth heads covered in black lines. They were over 30 meters tall, far smaller than those mountain-sized sea monsters. However, their auras were sinister and bloodthirsty. They wielded tridents in their hands. Now, they were slowly approaching as if he was prey on its deathbed struggle. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu were horrified. These fiend spirits possessed terrifying power that countered their divine energy. Even they didn't dare to enter deep into the Black Sea. The Black Sea's barrier had already formed, and they had to use up a huge amount of their core divine energy to break through it. But they needed time to store up the necessary energy. With these fiend spirits coming, there was no time at all. Just then, a sinister wind blew, and ripples appeared on the surface of the water, which was originally as smooth as a mirror. Following it, strange creaking sounds could be heard. In the distance, a broken ship slowly floated over. The ship was rotting and decayed, while the canvas on the mast was in tatters. A weak wind blew it, causing it to creak. It sounded as if it was recounting its grief. A ghost ship. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu were shocked. In all their time in the netherworld, this was their first time seeing a ghost ship. The ghost ship slowly floated straight toward Long Chen. Long Chen was delighted. Perhaps he could use the ghost ship's power to escape. He saw a long chain on the side. However, while the sea monsters fled in terror, those fiend spirits were somehow not afraid of the ghost ship. They continued to slowly approach him. Scram! Long Chen cursed furiously. He charged toward the ghost ship like it was a lifeline. Unexpectedly, though, those fiend spirits really did vanish with his roar. They vanished without a trace like they had never appeared in the first place. Long Chen was startled. He didn't know if they had simply reacted too slowly to the ghost ship, or if they really had been scared away by his domineeringness. He had no time to think about it, and just charged up the ghost ship. Just then, the ghost ship shuddered. In front of Long Chen's stunned gaze, it slowly collapsed. It was as if some energy had cut off its final trace of vitality. The body of the ship fell apart like mud. How could I be this unlucky? Long Chen cursed furiously. Weren't ghost ships supposed to last forever? 
Was this ghost ship simply unable to endure his bad luck? Just then, sharp pain racked his chest. Something had pierced his chest and out his back. His blood then dyed the black water. Long Chen. Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu cried out in shock. This sudden attack was completely bizarre. The sharp pain made it difficult for Long Chen to move. Moreover, there was a destructive power in the wound that almost made his body collapse. It had to be known that the current Long Chen was in his full power state. He had his dragon scale supporting him, and the power of his physical body was at its peak. But even in this state, that attack was like a sharp blade slicing through paper. It easily pierced his body. The most terrifying thing was that Long Chen was unable to sense just what it was that had stabbed him. The destructive energy quickly invaded his body. Without Long Chen doing anything, the primal chaos bead seemed to have sensed the danger to his life, and so life energy poured out. As a result, the resplendent wood foundation divine trees withered at a speed visible to the naked eye. It had to be known that in their current state, their life energy was practically limitless. But this strange attack was using up their energy rapidly. Long Chen looked behind him. He saw something stained with his blood slowly floating away on the water. Navaloon, come get back here. Long Chen clenched his teeth and grabbed it. It only looked to be the size of a palm, but when he grabbed it, he suddenly felt a sharp pain. Three of his fingers were severed. Only then did Long Chen realize that it was some sharp tip, like a broken sword. Long Chen's fingers had brushed against its sharp edge, which instantly severed them. Long Chen was shocked and enraged. It was a black sword tipped the exact same color as the water. It was as if it was merged with the sea. It had no aura at all and was almost impossible to sense. If it wasn't stained with his blood, he wouldn't have been able to sense it. Long Chen had never seen something so terrifying. Using the jagged saber that Ling Yuan had given him, he tried to grab it, only for a hole to be cut into the saber as soon as they touch. This saber was a weapon of a nether god, but in front of that sword tip, it was as weak as paper. Long Chen caught up to the sword tip, and finally had a chance to carefully pinch it and pick it up. After obtaining it, Long Chen was delighted and charged back to the surface of the water. When he met the barrier, with a light swing of the sword tip, the barrier was instantly pierced through. He easily came out of the water. Long Chen, Lang Yuan and Ming Kang Yu were overjoyed. They had felt powerless just now and had really thought that Long Chen would die right in front of them. For the first time in their lives, they felt what true fear was. Right now, Long Chen was as pale as paper and the wound in his chest had yet to heal. Although it wasn't getting worse, it was still a bloody hole. He looked inside the primal chaos space. All the vegetation had withered to death, including the devil eye water lilies. In order to save his life, the primal chaos space had used up all the life energy available. Long Chen then tossed the pitch black sword tip into the primal chaos space. After that, he turned toward the two of them. Let's not stay here any longer than we have to. Help me gather those corpses. They are useful to me. Long Chen was in an extremely weak state right now. Just being struck by the sword tip sucked away all his energy. He didn't even have the energy to stand. Ming Ken Yu immediately gave orders for her subordinates to gather the corpses. Once the battlefield was cleaned up, they immediately left. As for Long Chen, he was so tired that he fell asleep in Ming Kang Yu's embrace. After sleeping an unknown amount of time, he woke up from a dream and found himself in a palace. Seeing Ming Kang Yu and Ling Yuan by his side, Long Chen sighed. I forgot to tell you not to immediately go back in case those fiend spirits chase us. Ming Kang Yu rubbed his cheek and softly said, You fool! We've condensed a new divine core here. 
we can directly use the transportation formation to leave. Why worry about crossing the Black Sea again? Long Chen clapped his forehead. He had actually forgotten this. Long Chen then checked his wound. It had closed, but there were still black lines weaving on top of it like caterpillars crawling. He still wasn't fully healed. Long Chen, just what was it that injured you? asked Ming Kangyu. Only then did Long Chen cautiously take out the black tip of the sword for them to examine. 